You're listening to the world's smartest podcast network. Welcome to a bonus episode for Majoring in Everything. One of the best parts of having Majoring in Everything be the title of my podcast is anytime I have a cool conversation that happened to be recorded, I can release it as a bonus episode. So I was so grateful to sit down with uh, my favorite political commentator, policy expert, and comedian, Andrew Heaton, who you know from his amazing podcast, The Political Orphanage, and who you probably know from this very show. He came on as a guest earlier this season. I had a conversation with him and someone named Jennings about abortion. And I wanted to have this conversation because, well, I'll I'll explain it in the episode, but I wanted to flag ahead of time that we got together because we have different views about abortion. And I personally, it's something that matters to me both from a politics perspective and also a personal perspective insofar as those can be disentangled. That's a complicated thing. And we can talk about that as well. Uh, But I really wanted to understand the other side. And so I'm so grateful to the two of them for coming together. Heaton plays an amazing referee in the middle. I'm representing team left and Jennings is on the right. Uh, I also will say, so I, I learned a lot. I mostly just really appreciated having such a thoughtful conversation and reminding myself that it's okay to disagree with people. Warning, I think. I am not speaking on behalf of all people on the left. I am not speaking on behalf of all people who are pro-choice. I am pro-choice and I'm sharing my views and I definitely do not mean to be speaking for everybody. And I also, since we've had this conversation, have thought of a million other reasons why I'm pro-choice that we didn't get to in this episode. But that wasn't the point of the conversation. The point of the conversation wasn't to shout out my position and have him shout out his. The point of the conversation was to have a conversation across political lines, across belief systems, across ideologies. And I will be the first to say that I don't do that enough in my life. And I am shocked to say that I actually really enjoyed the conversation. It was tough at times. It was challenging at times. I got angry at times, but with myself, with the other view, you know, all that stuff. But I think for me, anyway, I'm not saying that we need to all learn how to talk to the other side, air quotes, but it was a very important conversation for me. And it has since helped me. This is so sad that I even had to have to say this, but it has since helped me see more of the humanity in the side I disagree with. And it's so sad that I wouldn't begin from that position. Of course, I know, right? But I don't feel it. I just see this kind of monolith enemy that we all freak out about on social media. So, all right, enough hand wringing. Uh, as you'll see in this episode, we're all reasonably sure we're all going to get canceled for different reasons. So uh, enjoy, I guess. All right. Thanks again for listening. But Man. but freewheeling conversation and Heaton, I basically thought of you just as like, I personally am more at ease in a three person conversation than a one on one. And I was like, who else would I want to have involved? And you, you. came to mind as the, the ultimate uh, arbiter between political worlds. So we I, need, we I need an orphan in this. the ligament in your thruple. I don't know. Yes, I take the compliment. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, the only thing I, that could have made the analogy with ligaments more disgusting is to add the word thruple. So thank you for that. <laughs> I've been trying to use the word thruple more frequently because it makes everyone feel uncomfortable except me. I uh, definitely thought it was pronounced thruple until I was corrected by a thruple last summer. Uh, I And I'll say I'm, I'm a decent guy to have on this phone call, too, because I have been both pro-life and pro-choice. So I can my, my brain is capable, I think, of, of code switching. And, All right, I can, John Kerry, flip flopper. Yeah, and I kind of look like him. Uh, yeah, you uh, do. Like, wait, hold on. Do the face, Eaton. Do the face. Genghis <laughs> Khan, when he went into <laughs> Central Asia, like yeah, I could. If if he'd become president, I would be on Saturday Night Live. As wow, he was yeah. now right now. poised to ruin my career talking about abortion. Right. Uh, well, I'm gonna uh, before we we ruin your career, I have some potential flattery for you, which is uh, my boyfriend and I went to see. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse on mm-hmm. Saturday. Mm-hmm. And I decided that you look a bit like Benedict Cumberbatch. I will take it. Thank you. I You're welcome. See that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Well, so so then, um, Andrea, you have summoned us here. I what, have summoned what, you. What, what what prompted you to to summon the three of us to discuss right. abortion and the ethics thereof? Right. So I thought first and foremost, I was like, how can I take down my career and mm. the career of others around me? You know, sort of a suicide pilot. Wait, mission. Hold on. I'm going to yeah. interject here already. Go uh, for it. You're a political science professor at NYU. Data Jennings, science professor at NYU. Da- data science professor at NYU. Jennings is a writer at The Blaze. I don't think either of you are going to get in trouble for your respect. No, no, no. Difference. This can't this can't get back to them. 
Oh, can it not? No, <laughs> that, exactly. That but... life. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I thought you were just going on, on extra. I was like, I don't no, think no, 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 Glenn no. Beck's no, going to fire Jennings for being pro-life. I, <laughs> the independent media guy who does not know the opinion of his audience on this one, I stand to live in either of your places. So if it doesn't work out, I get screwed. Anyway, I think continue. I think the probable we should probably bet on this. I think the probability that Heaton gets in a lot of trouble is higher than either of us, Jennings. But I think yeah. that if my audience, for example, which is generally around me, if not further left of me, there's a version of the world where I get mm. a lot of hate for even engaging with the other side. Right. Okay, it's like. Yeah. Zelensky is like, let's talk to Putin, you know, I mean, right. that's a bad example. Nope. And so Fair if, enough. if people say this was a bad move, then I'm in even more trouble than you are, Heaton, because yeah. you've at least taken yourself, you know, and said, I want to explore the view. You're at least being consistent with your mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Well, good. Now, so now Jennings is probably going to turn out OK either way. I think it's I'll be fine. Yeah, I'll be fine. <laughs> now, <laughs> now that we've established that you also might get in hot water, I apologize yeah. for derailing your, your very good preamble. Good. What What prompted you to want to launch into this? Right. So I so we're we're recording this about a week after the Supreme Court uh, leak came out saying that it looks like uh, the justices are going to overturn Roe v. Wade. And I immediately, like the reactionary liberal coastal elite that I am, took to social media and WhatsApp and all the things and Planned Parenthood networks and immediately freaked out like everybody else. We posted a million memes and a million things on TikTok and we all ran to Foley Square in Manhattan and had our protests and our chants and said our body, our choice and all this. And we all got very worked up. And I found myself thinking that, gosh, I am definitely finding it very difficult to imagine why I'm wrong. And he, you and I have talked about this on various conversations. I, I get nervous when I can't see what the other side might be thinking, or even that I think of it as such a bipolar, clean divide, right? And in the past, I've, I've tried to understand the pro-life position. I've had a few conversations here and there. I did a little bit of reading in grad school, <clears throat> not to brag. Uh, Heaton, I once had actually a pretty thoughtful conversation, I think on Twitter with one of your listeners. So thank you for that. Oh yeah, I remember that actually. Yeah. And, and it was like hats off, but he, he, he kind of corrected you and he thought that you got something wrong, but you all weren't screaming at each other. I remember yeah. that. It was actually, I, was, I was very impressed with both of you. So I, I'm open to the possibility that the two sides can understand each other. And with this issue in particular, I just feel like the country is is at a moment where we are about to tear each other each other to shreds. And so I'm partly selfishly curious to find out if I can have a productive, thoughtful conversation with somebody who I disagree with so strongly on something that's very personally important to me. And I will say, other than separate to other political issues we've talked about, I take this one rather, I have maybe the hardest time separating the personal from the political on this one in particular, maybe. There's other issues possibly, but it's but they're all like the gender stuff and all that. And so I thought, how am I going to have a conversation with someone I disagree with on this? And because I live in my echo chamber, I don't actually know anyone who is pro life. Like, like I might be the closest thing, you know, and so I I messaged the guy that's tepid. Yeah. And so I was like, Heaton, do we know Do you and I have a mutual friend? And if not, do you know someone? And then also Heaton, we've talked about this before, but I find that you're a very good ally is probably too liberal a word, maybe, but you're a very good arbiter of of and and holder of multiple political views. And so I thought that it might be nice to have you in the conversation as well, not as like a referee, but you Mm. can be. I mean, at the end, you can say which of us is right or wrong. We can turn this into a debate. I will totally take that middle responsibility. I think you're right in that my my default personality type is hostage negotiator. I'm not very good at getting people riled up. I'm not very good at leading causes. I'm really good at like getting people to put the gun down. Well, and that's that's the goal. Exactly. And that's kind of what I want to do is see, like, can we in a in a in an environment? And I'll get off my soapbox in a second, in an environment where we're all uh, we all have our guns up. I think both sides in the United States right now on this one. Uh, can we put the guns down and have a conversation and not in a gun control yeah. <laughs> capacity? Right, right. You're making a metaphor. <laughs> so, can I don't we know take if that's the guns yeah. away and have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so put what, them can- down. You can keep them. The government might take them when you're not looking, but. <laughs> So can, can I, I just want to like give you props, Andrea. I think that's a wonderful place to be coming from. I, I think oh, in thanks. general, anytime Agreed. you you don't know what the other, anytime the other side seems to be crazy uh, or alternately you, you are like, I don't believe anything the other team is saying. I think it's all lies. It has to be this thing I've come up with to explain their behavior. I, I think that we, we run a serious risk of 
epistemologically uh, kneecapping ourselves and at at worst being wrong um, and and at midpoint um, being not recognizing the the actual emotional veracity that someone that, that is legitimately feeling even if even if the the the, the data is wrong. So I wish more people were doing that. I hope I think people are going to be talking about this for the next several months, if not years. And I hope that people will do it in the way we're doing it, as opposed to uh, whatever we experienced last five years plus uh, pitchforks, which might also right. be how this works out. So anyway, kudos to you. I think it's a wonderful place to be coming from. Well, thank you. And I swear Jennings will, will let you speak in a moment. But one other no small Take your time. <laughs> caveat on this is that even, even having this conversation, I, I agree with you, Heaton, that it's, I think, talking across all political views is important. And I always love your work for doing that. And Jennings, thank you for your willingness to talk to me, uh, sure. the you know crazy liberal elite over here. But I also <laughs> worry- Are we elite? Continue. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm sorry, I'm I think joking. if I I'm call myself elite, that's elite, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and by, by the transitive property, I'm semi-elite by virtue semi-elite. of being friends with you. Yeah, yeah. Whereas Jennings, I guess, is the real Jennings, American. Jennings, you're I don't a quarter elite because you, you live am, in Texas, I, yeah, but I'm, you don't know Andrea as well. All right. I'm the lunchbox-toting blue-collar man of the <laughs> There we go. Joe Plummer. Of, you're, right. the, you're the Roseanne right. of, of yeah. this uh, this particular yeah. trio. <laughs> I'll be I'll be Ellen. All right, that's probably a bad example. No one likes Ellen anymore. <laughs> so last thing on this is that I also wonder if, you know, there, there's a big series set of voices in my echo chamber around this topic that I believe I could be wrong, but that I believe could come to me and say, how dare you even try to have a conversation about something so sacred? And so I could actually I don't think it's obvious, at least on my side, that having a conversation across the political spectrum on this is OK. And I'm very mindful of an article I read a million years ago about white feminism and how white women in particular tend to try to say, well, let's just talk this through when really it's something that's so important that we shouldn't talk about it and we should like fight for it. And I think I've been around a lot of those people. So I actually don't think that everyone on the left is going to be like, thanks for bridging the gap. I think they might be yeah. irritated with me. So that's I, the end. Well, I, I, if you, oh, I was just going to say, uh, if it's any consolation to you, um, the, the echo chambers from which I have come as well, same thing. There will be mm. people that if they listen to this, uh, pro-life people I know who, if they listen to this, will say, you know, why are you even talking to this person? And um, I mean, and, and I get everybody hates me yeah. <laughs> yes. because I'm well, I, 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 I'm very, I, I I, I'm kind of uncomfortably pro-choice. Like I'm not, I, I'm pro-choice, but I'm not thrilled about it. And I've got real concerns. <laughs> so I sound pro-life to my pro, my increasingly strident pro-choice friends who are, who are, demonstrably becoming more pro-choice in front of my eyes. But meanwhile, my pro-life friends still think I'm killing children. So it's like, man, I got nothing yeah, uh, yeah. except you two. Can I <laughs> make an analogy here? I think, I don't know what who's who uh, Jennings between you and me, but this might be like when Trump and Kim Jong-un got together <laughs> and then Dennis Rodman was also there. Colin Heaton, Rodman. I would have Rodman. Yeah, Heaton's Rodman because yeah. everyone's Heaton's definitely like, Rodman. Yeah. Like, we don't know if we're he's facilitating, is he helping, is yeah. he hurting, but it's like kind of cool he's there. And yeah, then nice. I don't know which one of us is Trump versus the leader of North Korea. But sure. uh, I don't know. I would tend to say that that by haircut, I come the closest to Kim Jong un. Yeah. Mm. So. yeah. Okay. So right. so then I'm gonna I'm gonna push this forward. Let's go. Um, here's what I suggest we do. Andrea, you said that um coming out of this this liberal elite coastal echo chamber, um, that it is difficult for you to even get into the headspace of somebody who's pro-life. So um and Jennings, I'm gonna have you do the inverse of this in a minute. But can can you give your best steel man mm -hmm. argument from the pro-life position? Uh yes. this is not your position. Anybody listening, don't take this out of context and, and, Here and, goes. and get, get Andrea in trouble. This is Andrea doing her best to give a, a rational, smart uh, yeah. de defense of the pro-life position. Perfect. So I, I also love the, the phrase steel man. I've never heard that before. And I should also say, you know, my goals for today, I don't know that we'll, it would be amazing if we like solved it and we can just write to the Supreme Court and say like, here it is. But I've just mutual understanding would be, would be awesome. So here we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, so, can, can I can I pause yeah. one more thing that, that could be a goal here? Um, I, I'll 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 preface it, Andrea. I'm I'm glad that you're wanting to talk about this to to your uh, left leftward progressive friends that believe that we have to fight and not talk about it. 
my as somebody who is on your team, who's pro-choice, but is sort of culturally amphibious, I need to point out to you that the, the realm of abortion law is now going to be democratic. It's now going to be settled through the democratic process, assuming that Roe versus Wade is overturned, which we think it probably will be, which will mean the only way to settle this from now on is going to be by convincing people to vote, uh, depending on how you want it to go. And the polling is that America has not changed its mind in 40 years. It's about a 10% difference. America's 10% more pro-choice than it was, uh, as opposed to say like gay marriage or interracial marriage, where America's just completely gone yay. That hadn't happened. So if if they're wanting to protect abortion rights, and I am on their team, I'm on your team, the way to do that is going to have to be convincing people in, that are independents or conservatives to come around. Otherwise, it's there just not going to happen. Um, so having stated right. that, uh, then I'll right. say the, the other goal that I, I think what we could possibly do is I doubt either one of you is going to come around to going, uh, yes, I agree with you. Uh, you've changed my position, but I, it might be possible to actually have kind of a consensus of workable legislation. I, I don't yeah. think that that's entirely like, I, I just, in, in preparation for for my show that came or that's going to come out this week, should have come out by the time people are listening to this. I read through Roe versus Wade. I read through Dobbs versus Jackson and uh, like, I weirdly actually think that there's law we could pass that most Americans would agree with. I actually think mm. that's doable, but we'll nice. we'll do that at the back end of this. So All anyway, right. steel man away, right. Andrea. Steel man away. So my my best understanding of the reason that someone would be pro-life is to say that human life is precious and human life begins the moment the sperm has fertilized the egg. And that's like the magical time when some, when, when all the complexities of life and that process starts to kick off. And I understand why that's a, like a focal point. And so we should protect all human life. And if that's human life, then my goodness, that counts. And the argument for like, well, what about a woman's right to choose is, yeah, well, we don't have a right to choose to kill someone, we don't have a right to choose, you know, I don't know, to, to sign up for like a drug test or, or, or you know, whatever. Uh, we, the woman has bodily autonomy, but the unborn also has bodily autonomy. And so why would we prioritize the, the, the woman or the person with the uterus over the unborn when we could have them both live and something like uh, adoption or some other process could be uh, used instead or, you know, the person uh, and the parents, I guess, who who have this is like hard for me to say, who have uh, engaged in sexual activity that gave rise to the child have a responsibility to that child now. And they should. Honor that responsibility. I, I think that's pretty good. Andrew, if, if you had a, a decent cowboy hat and a gun, you could <laughs> run for governor of Kansas or Texas or whatever. So I, I think that was pretty good. But I, I feel I, physically I, unwell. <laughs> kudos. Well, and really, again, props to you, because if, if people listening at home, if you can't do this, it it, it yeah. belies a very rigid, closed mind. It doesn't mean yeah. doesn't mean you have to agree with what you're saying. It means that you, you can you're capable of understanding the other person, person's position. And who is it? It was like um, it might have been John Stuart Mill who said the, the, the man who only understands his position understands mm. no position. I think there's something to that. Yeah. Uh, Jennings, you being the the pro-life bastion here, what is your take on this? Is there anything that you want to correct to what like percentage wise? How accurate would you say that reflects the the, the pro-life position? Well, I, I think it's I think it's fairly accurate. I, I think it um, the pro-life position is a is a little bit. Um, it's nuanced. So there's not. There's not one specific. So, for example, the, the thing that I would correct, and this is only from my perspective, this is not from the perspective of probably most pro-life people I know, because I think most pro-life people do believe that life begins at conception. Um, I don't say that. Uh, what I say is I don't know when life begins. I also don't exactly know what life is. Um, I mean, I, I know like what biological life is. Um, but but what is the property that that makes a, a person a human being or makes a human a person rather? Um, and so I wouldn't say that it begins at conception because I don't know. What I do know is that when a sperm and a cell or sorry, a sperm and an egg combine, the only thing they're ever going to make is a human being. Um, and so because of that and because I don't believe that we have. I don't even know if it's scientifically possible to say what makes a person out of uh, out of a human. Um, but certainly it is the case that we don't know it at this time. And so I would err on the side of caution in terms of erring on the side of life. Um, 
and then uh, yes i would say the rest of, of what you said pretty pretty neatly fits into the um to everything that comes out from that so i mean that's a just a very very basic um overlay but but and yeah i i think it's, it's a pretty accurate uh steel man and thank you well thank uh, you can i kind of mm. interject my position to so everybody knows where i'm coming from with the rest of the episode mm-hmm. Um, I no Heaton, stop. Yeah, I'm this, okay. this is I'm your okay show. With doesn't saving mean you get my talk. career. Yeah, I'm all right with it. Uh, my position is this: uh, I, I, me being a materialist and a friendly low wattage agnostic, I don't think souls exist. I certainly don't think you can predicate policy based on souls. So I. By don't, the way, I agree with that. Yeah, I, I, I should point out you, you also the, the, are not, the policy part. I don't know about whether right. they exist. And, and, and I should say Jennings and I have had many of the good nature conversations that that Andrea is about to enjoy with him, usually drunk. Uh, but we've 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 had several of these conversations. We've should I be other. drinking? Am I doing this wrong? I think if we're we'll we'll, sure. we'll, we'll drink after we get canceled. We'll um, do it for the Patreon folks. Yeah, okay, uh, if there are any left. But but so so my my thought is that uh, I I don't think that an abortion at the early stages is immoral. I I do not think that it is the destruction of an autonomous human life. Um, so like I I the, the whole. Um, we're going to make people go to special clinics and, and we want this to be very rare. Like, I don't really, I don't think there's a problem with it. Uh, if I did, if I thought that it was extinguishing an autonomous human life, I would be against it because I'm against murder. And for many of the reasons you just outlined, Andrea, where it gets tricky for me is I do acknowledge that at some point along the lifespan of that fetus, it goes from being what I would acknowledge as a clump of cells that does not have moral standing to an actual baby that has not been born yet. Um, so for that reason, I, I, while I disagree with the jurisprudence of Roe v. Wade, I actually rather like it as legislative policy. If it had come before the Senate, I would have voted in favor of it. And Roe v. Wade basically said what I just said, which is like, look, we don't know at the beginning. There's no way to tell this. Like, there's no consensus on when life begins. So conception's way too early. We're going to give that to the the uh, the woman and the doctor. But at the at the tail end, yeah, it's a baby. It's pretty clearly a baby. So we're going to prescribe that, except in cases of of uh, you know terminal health issues with the mother, or they didn't say this, but I would add this um, severe fetal abnormality. Um, and in that capacity, I would actually be very similar to most European countries. Um, for people listening, America has far more liberal laws about abortion than Europe has. Like, like uh, in the United States presently, at the time of recording, um, you can't uh, have an abortion except for uh, undue medical purposes after 23 weeks or 24 weeks, whereas like Germany is like 12 weeks, um, uh, Portugal's 10 weeks. So I, I'm kind of, I, I see this less as a binary and more of a continuum. And for that reason, I think I'm probably always going to be uncomfortable with it because from my perspective, uh, I believe in bodily autonomy. I think women should have control of their bodies. I do not wish to infringe that. And I would view the infringement of bodily autonomy as something akin to slavery as a moral evil. At the same time, I also don't want to kill babies. And I don't know where that bright line is. For me, I'm settling on viability as the mm. the bright line that's the most workable thing from a policy perspective. But I'm always going to feel a little Just uncomfortable. Just for your listener's sake, uh, can you d- define viability too? I'm going to define viability at the point where the average baby is able to survive outside of the womb through medical assistance. And I'm aware that that's changed. My understanding is that presently it's still about 23 weeks, whereas like at, at Roe versus Wade, it was 28. And uh, uh, Casey versus Planned Parenthood actually adjusted that to reflect that. And, and it might change in the future. Um, and, and I'm open to that changing as well. But that's about where I'm at. So uh, I'll, I'll pause it like, and I realize this is a mealy mouth thing to say. I don't see this as a 100% binary issue. I don't think most people think that way. I think most people, if you ask them, should all abortion be illegal in all instances, would say no, they're extenuating circumstances. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, most people wouldn't say, um, yes, all abortions are legal under all situations. I think most people statistically would go, yeah, like a week before birth, that's just right. murder, as would I. Um, right. So that, that's where I'm at. I'm pro-choice at the beginning. I'm pro-life at the end. I think that makes me, from a legislative perspective, pro-choice, but not very full-throated about it and kind of uncomfortable. Because again, I don't know where that bright line is and I don't know how to find it. Well, and it kind of makes me think, and Jenny, something you said made me think of this too, is that in the field of complexity science, we talk about emergence where you have something that goes from basically not life to life. And it's this idea right. that it's, there's a possibility, and I would defer to the biologists or the doctors, something that it's like, you're not viable, not viable, not viable in that case, not human, not, not a thing, you're a clump of cells. And then there's some tipping point or, or like critical, you know, this, like critical mass or something where you're like, and now it's human. And so maybe it's not even like, maybe there really is a point of inflection in 
humans and we can all just agree that that's like, okay, 20 weeks, the end. It, it I don't would know. be great if we had that. If, if we, that's we, scientifically we, determinable at some point, if there, if there were some way, and, and again, I'm not sure science can do it, but if they, right. if, if science can do that, I'm all, I'm all on board. Yeah. I have no problem with, with anything that, that isn't going to, um, well, we'll get, we'll get to that. I, 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 think I will say that I would be a lot more likely to, to be supportive of, of that idea. Um, if there were something that, <clears throat> that could absolutely prove that, that the, that, that whatever it is that it is to be a human is not present from, you mm-hmm. know, the beginning. Um, and I, again, I, I want to stress, I do not mean souls. Um, I hopefully we'll get into this, like sort of my, my journey with this. I, I had a similar thing to what you, uh, experienced in that I, you know, I was raised to be pro-life. I was raised in a very religious pro-life household. Um, your father's not a conservative politician in Wyoming, is he? <laughs> <laughs> could be. <laughs> um, but at some point in, in my twenties, uh, it, it came to me that believing in something just because of my religious background was not going to be enough for me to want to um, advocate positions that would force other people to live their lives the way that I would choose to live mine. And so I had to pull myself away from the, from the religious viewpoint on abortion and try to look at it from every angle that I could. I I've learned that I really enjoy being wrong um, in, in discussions like these, like if we could get to the end of this and you could prove me wrong and I could feel like, Oh my gosh, I've been missing. The, I've had you this quit one place. You'll go work at Vox. Area of- <laughs> okay, pressure's on for the movement. I got to word this right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I would be all right with that because I've been wrong about a lot of things or I've, I've shifted my perspective about a lot of things that I, that I previously felt differently about. And uh, that's why if somebody asks me, am I conservative? I'll say, well, about some things. Yeah. Um, there's other things that I'm wildly liberal about. So, you know, uh, anyway, the, the, the point with all of that is if you could show me that line, that bright line, um, then I would be a lot more apt to be persuaded. So um, anyway, he, I, I don't I, know. I, that I, it's, I don't know that it's ever coming. I, I agree with you. Like it's I would I would love to have that bright line there because it would make it much easier for me to go. Yay. Full throated, hundred percent pro choice here and hundred percent right. pro life over here with these minor. But uh, right. like like what the English did for centuries was have you ever heard of quickening? This is a new term to mm-hmm. me. This came up when I read Roe versus Wade and when I read uh, Dobbs versus uh, Jackson's Women's Health Clinic. Like under English common law, the quickening is where English law started pertaining to uh, it, it is a life and it is abortion. And they had it's like it's worse to kill a, a fetus later than it is earlier. But basically the point at which the woman can feel it, that's the quickening. Prior to that, it didn't it didn't apply. So that was that. And then like the Catholics had the, the doctrine of ensoulment for a really long time where it was just it, it wasn't a thing until 40 days. Uh, but but I, I want to go, yeah. go down a historical rabbit hole. Um, Jennings, I, I want you to do two things. Um, first of all, can, can you clarify for me? Do you, do you more or less accept my continuous reasoning that you don't know where life starts, but you're just you're erring on the side of the baby uh, as, a, as a kind of um, c- conservative in the risk averse default? Uh, and then once you've answered that, I think it would be fair to have you steel man the pro-choice argument so that we yeah. kind of have everybody round out here. Uh, so, yeah. So the answer is yes. I, I do actually think that I I, I, I exist uh, in the space of feeling that most of uh, most of my pro-life argument centers around the fact that that we cannot define uh, where life begins and or, or say again, not where life begins, because biologically it's alive uh, as a clump of cells, but where humanity begins. Um, and by the way, uh, I'll, I'll get to the steel manning in just a moment, but, but let me ask just a quick question to either or both of you. If it were the case, let's say in 15 to 20 years, that the moment that you find out that you are pregnant, uh, all a doctor has to do is, is wave a uh, Star Trek-esque transporter over your womb and it uh, the 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 growing fetus disappears from your woman goes into a some sort of um, chamber where it can be grown, which we're we are not that far away from that. I don't think uh, minus the transporter part. But if if that were possible, 
at that point, would you still believe that it was okay to abort the fetus? Or would you say, well, no, it, it makes the most moral sense to put it in this chamber where it will be grown. And let's, again, let's assume in this thought experiment that um, it's going to be well taken care of. It's going to be uh, adopted out to a family who wants it, all of these things. Um, given those, would you, would you at least at that point align with a, not, you wouldn't call it a pro-life point of view, but, but would you align with my view, which is that it is better at that point to transport the fetus out of the womb uh, into that chamber. And then the mother can go about the rest of her life. That's a good question. As I was like forming my answer, I was like, I see what the trick is here. <laughs> the trap. <laughs> I can see what you're doing. Do you, you want me to buy you clever. some time? Uh, <laughs> Jennings, my, my inclination is yes, but only because I feel like this would be a great way to start a space colony. If we had oh, a bunch God. of like frozen fetuses that we could send to another planet. And Isn't have that robots the plot frozen? of uh, Raised by Wolves, the yeah. Amazon show? So, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, that <laughs> sounds pretty cool. Uh, I, I would be amenable to that, Jennings, but I, but I don't think I would do it the whole way through because I'm still fairly confident that like the first, I, I, I don't have this broken down week by week, but the first month um, I'm like, yeah, it's just a bunch of cells. And I, I would still think that uh, a, a woman would have a, a legitimate interest in saying, I do not wish to have a... Uh, a child um, that I am related to and, and therefore mm. somewhat emotionally connected to out and about in the world. However, what I would do is I'd, I'd probably like move that right line forward and go to the point where I'm like, well, I don't know anymore. It can feel pain. It's got a heartbeat, that kind of thing. Maybe then I would do it. I don't know that I would do it 100%, but I would move the needle. Okay. All right. I actually think I'm, I'm more pro-life than Heaton in this. Don't take that out of context. <laughs> Uh, and on this one, because my big question was like, like, I think the two big variables are the, the physical changes and what it does to the person who's carrying the baby. And so you've resolved that, which is I wave the wand and I put them in this tube or womb or whatever. Uh, the and Jennings then, chamber is it will the be Jennings known. chamber as it <laughs> will be known. Chamber. Trademark that. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. His wife hates it when I call her that. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I'm going to cut that. I'm going to cut that bit. I'll leave it. I like it. it. Humanizes you. I mean, it dehumanizes you in my eyes, but other people's eyes. It'll humanize it dehumanizes you. my wife, but it humanizes yeah. you. <laughs> Jennings and I say far worse jokes in okay. general, not about his wife. Uh, so <laughs> I apologize for it. Jennings and I are used to saying things that we know are inappropriate to each other. And we've looped. Andrew I mean, should this. his wife be on the conversation? I, I feel <laughs> like we're all right. We'll have a separate conversation about that. Uh, but then the, yeah, the, the, the magic wand, the secondary magic wand of like, well, who's going to raise this thing, creature, human, whatever, uh, from there, if that's taken care of as well, then I actually was like, I think I'm cool with it, though I realize that that means admitting that there is obviously viable life, even though we've, we've resolved the one problem. So Heaton, I hadn't even gotten troubled by the emotional bond. It didn't even occur to me <laughs> or not even the emotional, like the physical. I mean, you could imagine a medical version where you say, look, I have. So, for example, I have like all the autoimmune diseases and both sides of my family have all the like, like my offspring will not be healthy, will not be useful for humanity, not to get like very, very Hitler on everyone. But uh, you could imagine like medical reasons to say, like, I don't think that this but maybe not. I don't know. So I, I guess Jennings, the short answer is like, I'm vaguely OK with it if we could satisfy all the things that you described. And even better, know. if we can send them and start a space colony. I, I suspect uh, totally that agree. ethics aside, I think that that would be a very workable policy solution at yeah. that point. If it's like, okay. hey, like, like, here's the deal. Uh, there are no abortions, but you don't have to carry the kid. Like, I, I feel like most people would take that deal. Yeah, sure. So Elon Musk, uh, okay, get so on this. So let me, yeah, right. Yeah. So let me let me go ahead and steal, man, uh, because I think that's actually a really good jumping off point. Because we do live in a in a time where uh, adoption, the adoption system, the foster care system in this country and around the world uh, is a a flaming pile of garbage. Um, I've actually I've actually worked around the the adoption and and um, and foster care system. I worked in a uh, uh, an alternative school where I was around the kids who uh, couldn't go to regular schools because they got in trouble with Is the law and the things deviant like that. school you worked at. Yes. Mm. <laughs> yes. We called it that the deviant school. Um, so I've been around it quite a bit and I've seen it and it's bad. It's really bad. And uh, there, there's definitely an argument to be made that, that, um, that those who oppose uh, abortion don't take the situation out far enough 
They don't look at it and say, they, they, I, I think the meme is a little bit um, overwrought, but the idea in the meme is not. And that is um, you want people to be forced to have children they don't want, whom they are then going to give up for adoption and put into a horrible system that is, uh, that is mismanaged and, and perhaps underfunded and uh, lots of other things. It, and so the meme that arises out of that, of course, is, well, you just don't care. Um, so that system uh, does exist, and it is very, very flawed. Um, also, I, you're not going to believe that I'm saying this, uh, I believe very, very, very strongly in bodily autonomy for all human beings. I am very, I could not agree with you more that you own your body. You should be able to do with your body what you want. However, with rights come responsibilities. Uh, I think I've heard it uh, explained one way that, that my rights, uh, uh, if, I, if I decide to go out and, and shake my fist around, I can shake it around as long as it doesn't hit your face. Um, and that, that I, I don't think that you can remove the concomitant responsibility toward life. Um, but, uh, but we'll get to that. I'm steel manning. I'm sorry. I've got to go back. Wouldn't, to steel you, <laughs> wouldn't you also <laughs> sorry. like th this is, this <laughs> is to, to try and be an interlocutor for both sides here. I think that this is one of the big contention points that I notice a lot is pro-choice people will go, um, how can you be ranting? Because a lot of the, the ranting at conservatives, how can you all be ranting about individual rights and, and the individual and how the, the government shouldn't make you take mandates and all these things, but then want to go uh, order women's bodies around? And I, I think, uh, Jennings, I, I will defer to you on this, but I think the conservative position is, well, we're we're talking about two bodies. Like the yeah. the, the, the baby is also a right. body. It also has individual rights. So the, in, the conservatives do not see themselves as hurting individual rights, but rather having to balance the individual rights of the woman and the baby, which both count to them. Is that about right? right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, but, but to, to return to steel manning, I apologize. I, um, it's hard for me to, but not because I, not from an emotional standpoint, just from a, a like, I'm, I, I have a, a tendency to loop back to my actual position. Um, so I think uh, bodily autonomy is a big thing. Um, and I, and I do think that it is, under uh, appreciated by people uh, of the pro-life um, bent, um, at least at least when in the mainstream, we see that in the mainstream. Um, so I think that's a big thing. I think it's something that needs to be addressed. Um, finally, and I'll just include this in the steel manning, we don't know that life begins at conception. Anybody who tells you that it does is probably telling you that based on a religious belief. I respect that, but uh, I don't think that that is how we should be governing uh, a country full of people who are not all Catholic uh, or not all, you know, Christian in general or not all name any religion that, that is that is anti-abortion. Um, I think that we have to we have to legislate based on what's best for the entire country. Um, and so if it is the case that that. Um, you can look at that and say, well, the, this, this clump of cells does not feel anything yet. It does not think you, it's not going to have any thoughts when you terminate it. It's not going to experience fear or anything like that because it hasn't developed a brain yet. Then um, in the steel man world, uh, I think that that's, I think that's a viable way to look at it. Um, so that's, I don't know. Can I, that, can I, I'm, I'm, there, there was a lot there. Uh, can, I'm going to kick it to Senator, Senator, not Jennings, Senator Jansen. You are on the record saying that you're firmly pro-choice. Give the American <laughs> people a synopsis of why you are pro-choice and they should be Senator Jansen. Um, women own their bodies or, or birth uh, people, people with feet, um, with uh, wombs own their bodies. Um, and uh and it, it's not really my position to tell them what to do with their bodies. Um, I have uh, never experienced pregnancy myself. Um, and I don't really know what it would be like. There's that. But even if I had, I still wouldn't be able to step inside the head of someone else and, and live their experience. And so I think that, that we should legislate based on giving people 
the most freedom possible. And that includes uh, the freedom to not maintain a pregnancy that they don't want. Uh, that concludes our show. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Senator. Uh, you, and then, you, I, you got I, me. I, I got yeah. trapped. I do. I do want to kick it to because Andrea really is a senator. I didn't tell you this, Jenny. Yeah. She actually is a senator. Oh, uh, no. And is not of choice. like a recognized state, but indeed is <laughs> sort of like a uh, what's the word? Like An a honorary Star Wars senator. senator. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so, yeah. What, what, what is your take on that? Do you think that that's about uh, that? Is that about the consensus with pro-choice people? What would you want to amend? And are there arguments that you think are stronger in favor of, uh, than, than what Janisha said? I think the well, I think the final summary that Senator was a Jansen mm -hmm. just shared is is spot on. And that really is the crux of it, is that it's you know, we have a body of a living person and they should be able to choose what happens to that body. And Yes, there is a there's a recognition that you have something, um, you know, in your body potentially that could become life or is is sort of on its way or the process has gotten into into motion. And so and I think this is like an Obama thing, like we don't we don't take the choice in being pro-choice lightly. We take it very seriously, but retaining the option of choice and letting a person with a uterus, thanks for saying that, that was like way amazing. Uh, I'm trying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> was uh, very generous steel manning, I would say. So thank you. Um, yeah, the, the person who's already alive gets to have that bodily autonomy kind of first. And then I would say the only, the second piece on this, and maybe this is more of just us on the left being perplexed by the, not to be uh, Norm Macdonald, but like the hypocrisy on the right is the piece that you articulated earlier about, well, what happens after the child is born? And we on the left perceive more conservative or people on the right as being against things like, um, you know, minimum wage increases and universal health care and, and all these other safety and the fixing all of what's going on in adoption. So it's sort of like, Unless we can fix all of that and guarantee that a child being born into poverty to a, a mother who doesn't have the means or a parent who doesn't have the means to support this child, until we can address all of those things and we also put into that, you know, gun control so that we know the kid isn't going to get shot in schools and all this other stuff, we think that it's irresponsible to bring a child into this world that is not wanted and is set up for such misery later on. I think it's the only other piece that I would add because we, we very quickly get into the like, okay, if you care so much about life, why don't you care about life once someone is born? Basically. But now I've, I've warped into my own view again, but I think overall that was a really good uh, statement. So thank you for saying it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, so first of all, um, as far as the, the, the issue of what happens to children once they are born, if they are adopted out, um, like I said, I've seen the system. I've seen how how bad it can be. Um, I think that if you were to ask most people, and and maybe not at every moment in their life, but but it throughout their life, I think the majority of people would say most of the time, um, if they grew up in in those circumstances, they would say, "Well, I'm still glad to be alive. I'm still." glad to because the i think the i think that there's some cognitive dissonance going on with um with that viewpoint and i think it it, it centers around this idea of potential um you can be born into a bad situation but your potential to rise out of that situation exists especially in this country i mean for all of the for all of the ills that we have here in america we we are i mean our poorest people do far better than than the poor people in a lot of other countries um that doesn't mean that we shouldn't work on the system i'm not saying that. uh and i'm not saying that there are not um ways to to do better by the people who are uh at that lower rung uh that's actually something that heaton and i've been kind of tossing back and forth for years now because um because i'm a lot more amenable to aspects of the welfare state than i used to be um i still think it's horrifically mismanaged i still think that, that you could cut a lot of horrible programs and fund better ones like for example adoption programs um i i, I think that that anything that the government uh has touched typically doesn't work out particularly well but that doesn't mean that it couldn't 
Um, anyway, uh, the idea that the, the, not the, the idea that, that powers the decision to, um, or helps power the decision to, to allow abortion being, well, they're just going to grow up in a bad environment anyway. I don't actually think that that's a very good way to look at it because I, I don't, I, I, it's, it's a sympathetic way to look at it. And I think that's wonderful. It's good to be empathetic and sympathetic, but it does, it does ignore the fact that, that people can rise from the ashes of the situation into which they've been placed. And I think it's, it's, it's a secondary argument to the central argument. And it makes that argument makes sense if you don't think the fetus is a baby. Because then you're basically right. going, hey, this thing that's not a baby, if you make it come to fruition, will become a baby born into a horrible circumstance, better to nip it in the bud. That makes ethical, logical sense to me. However, if you're saying, yeah, it's a baby, but it would be born into a bad life, so we should murder it, then then like, then it's a, mm. a completely different ballpark. Um, and uh, and I, I see that one confused a lot uh, because like if it's, and like, like I, I had this conversation the other day, one, one of my friends who is pro-choice and was irritated with me not being ex- as excited as she was about, about all this. Um, I, I brought up like, well, yeah, I'm pro-choice, but at the end, like, I don't like a week before birth, like acknowledging that there's like z- virtually zero women that want to get non-therapeutic abortions, that it's fleetingly, fleetingly rare, acknowledging that I would still be morally against that. And, and her response was like, well, like, I think that, uh, like, like there are things worse than murder. And like, like, even if it is murder, we should allow that to happen. And I was like, you lost me. Like you, you lost me at that point. Like I'm, I have no, anyway, I, I should shut up since this is more of a dialogue between the two. No, no, well, you're good. Yeah. I, I wanna, and then, I then to add, add on something. the other the other side of it to go back to Andrea then um, Andrea I think one of the things you brought up that I, I think is lost to a lot of conservatives is conservatives are very concerned with the appropriate level of government to address things uh, uh, they're they're very concerned like particularly constitutional conservatives about state versus local control versus federal is it constitutional is it not constitutional and I think one of the kind of procedural arguments that works well from a pro choice perspective is in a- ambiguous situations. We should default to the smallest decision-making um, apparatus associated with it, and mm. in this instance, it would be the woman and her doctor. Uh, that that if if we don't know, where there's no consensus on whether or not this qualifies as murder or not, then the the locus of decision-making would be best left to, uh, in that ambiguous situation, the person directly affected by it. Can I like tell me if this would be be a productive thing to do? I wonder if it might be worth each of us saying what we think the biggest weakness in my own argument is, because I think you're hitting on something very important, which is, and and Jennings, I I really hadn't thought about it it this way. And I appreciate you saying it is like, who am I to decide that the circumstances are so bad that someone else shouldn't live? And I think that's a very good point. And I think that's something that I don't normally think about. And so I wonder if maybe that's, you know, and Keaton, I appreciate you also clarifying that that's, that is the secondary argument. The primary argument is the bodily autonomy. Secondary is like, Hey, you know, if we're not going to support the children after this, then why should we put women through all these other things? If we're not going to like set them up for success, set them up for success, you know, take care of children once they're born, right. Make sure that they have access to healthcare and things so that, right. But I think you're right that there is a very kind of like patronizing almost, uh, or paternalistic idea that we decide that, oh, my situation is so bad that you shouldn't be alive. Uh, Plus, if you're talking to a conservative that that has like a staunch pro-life position, keep in mind, they think it's murder. So if you're having this conversation with them, you're going, well, we should allow murder in these instances. And, And you have to be able to convince them that that is literally worse than murder. Right, right. And, and so and then I think the what this makes me think about are the two areas that I wonder about most when I do vaguely question my own beliefs or I, I can start to imagine uh, flaws with my own view are, are twofold. One is I think we do get hung up on our obsession with our perceived hypocrisy of the right, which is we have an oversimplified idea that uh because of our understanding of, you know, being for smaller government and all these other things that we're like, oh, you don't care at all about what happens after life. And so it's like, there's like this, you think you're pro-life, but, but you, you don't do any of these other things that help support life. And so we get, we get so angry about the hypocrisy that we don't try to understand the argument that you're making. 
And I think the other big weakness is we do something that we often accuse people on the right of doing, which I think is a logical fallacy, which is the whole slippery slope argument. So when gay marriage was a big discussion in the early 2000s or whenever that was, uh, I remember uh, observing conversations and frenzies on the right where they would say, well, if we allow gay people to get married, what's next? You're going to marry dogs. You're going to marry that. You know, and I was like, That's, no, it stops there. Although now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, well, now we're trying to claim that we can be different genders, but sorry, you know, we, <laughs> the old one too. But, uh, but we are doing that towards the right on this issue where, where we are saying, so, okay, I don't get to choose whether or not I have an abortion. Does that mean that like, I also can't it, it like I don't even know how to articulate. Uh, she's like, going to invoke the Handmaid's Tale. The Handmaid, oh yeah, exactly, right? I'm going to end up in the Handmaid's Tale, and and right. may the fruit blossom within us all, and and right. and all that stuff. And uh, what's to prevent? You know, uh, are they going to get rid of our birth control, and we all have to go back to the ways where we all just had millions of kids and and all this kind of stuff? And we're going to have our there, coat there hangers. Are people who are suggesting that they're going to overturn Obergefell because of this. Yeah. All right. Well, gay marriage. Okay. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's going to go for gay marriage. It's going to go for interracial marriage. It's going to go for and, and, and a lot of people on the left are also pointing to the fact that the, this legislation will, especially it goes to the states and go to, to a lot of poorer states. It's going to disproportionately affect women and people who are already marginalized for other reasons, whereas like, you know, white uh, you know, middle class people living in states where abortion is going to be protected, like I will continue to have access to it and people who are much worse off than I am. So it's going to like exacerbate. So but yes, all the slippery slope. And the one other thing I will say I forgot on the hypocrisy, uh, the hypocrisy side is uh, and this is going to be a mess to get into the vaccines side of things where it's like, how can a group that says my body, my choice, I don't want to get a vaccine if I don't have to down with vaccine mandates. How can you mandate that someone carry a pregnancy to term and then deal with whatever comes after that, whether it's adoption and the emotion and the, this and that. And and then we imagine that on the right, they say, well, but va vaccines oh, well, on the left, we also say vaccines can save other people. So you are choosing your own body over the health of other people who are vulnerable, Im immunocompromised, older, anyone who might die from COVID. So we get anyway, we get we get slippery slope and we get very hung up on the hypocrisy and, and yell at each other about how crazy you all must be. <laughs> so that's that's what's going on on my side of the social media. Uh, yeah. So just to really quickly to, to the to the vaccine point, um, I I actually don't know how I feel about that. Now I can mm. tell you that most pro-life people I know, the the they would make an argument that would say something like, well, first of all, the vaccine uh, is not the vaccine ostensibly is saving your life. Maybe it's saving others as well. But, but they would say, I mean, various people would say various different things. My parents hate the vaccine. So they would say, no, the vaccine's killing you. Right. Um, so like it's, but uh, from, from the standpoint of somebody who does not, I, I don't think that I, and perhaps everyone, but certainly I do not know the efficacy of the vaccine at this point versus the, uh, versus the danger of coronavirus. I I think we're a little ways out maybe from having good data to really be able to look at it as a whole. Um, I don't know that you're wrong though. I, I, I would not, I would not make the statement that you're wrong about that, that that isn't an area of hypocrisy um, or at least potential hypocrisy because yeah, it could be the case if, if it turns out that everything that, that the left side of the aisle has been saying about the, the, the vaccines has been right for the last two years, then yeah, I mean, you you aren't just dealing with your own life, you're dealing with other people's lives. If that's the case, then I think that it's comparable. And and I think that's a I think that's a fair uh point. Um, you know, the the first thing, the idea that um that we were talking about earlier, where I, I think there is there's definitely um there's confusion on both sides of this. And I think where the left gets confused with the right is that they do think that the right doesn't care about. Uh, babies after birth. That's not true. Um, maybe the the means by which people on the right try to make life better don't align with the means that the left thinks should be there. But that doesn't mean that they're not doing what they think will be uh, most efficacious in creating a better world for these babies that are born. Um, now, that doesn't mean everybody, obviously, I, there's some real shitheads on the right, too. I, I'm not saying they're not. And, and the um, left, don't worry. Yeah. And the left, yeah. <laughs> and the middle. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so to, 
uh, yeah. Anyway, to your point earlier, um, <laughs> as far as the, the thing that I think is the weakest part of my argument, um, and I just full disclosure here, it, it is really that I default to a kind of pragmatism when it comes to um, considering bodily autonomy, which, as I said at the beginning, I, I fully support bodily autonomy when it doesn't involve another life. But when it does, or I perceive it does, um, I probably allow um, that person's, uh, what that person is going to go through um, to not affect me emotionally as much as I could. Hmm. Um, I've seen childbirth. My, my wife's given birth and it's, it's rough. It is not pretty. Um, not just the birth itself, but like all the things leading up to it, it's rough. It's very, very difficult on, on the body of, of the person who's carrying the child. Um, so yeah, that's probably my weakest point is that, is that I go into, uh, pragmatic mode, uh, and say, okay, I I'm very sympathetic and I want to help you in any way I can. And I will be supportive of you. Um, I will try to make things easier for you, but you can't kill this person. Mm -hmm. Can That's I, probably, I don't know, mine. What about you? Eden? Can I, can I, I'm, I'm a mealy mouse. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to do it. I'm going to take a drink every time you say mealy mouse, my, just because I really I, like it. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll say like, my, I actually think my, my position make, weirdly makes total sense to me. Like it, like it makes complete unabrogated sense to me. <laughs> Um, uh, and, and ironically is probably the dominant position of the American people, but it's cer right. certainly not the dominant position of the commentariat, which tends to go hard left or hard right. And so I end up looking like, I, I won't go into the optics. Um, uh, I, I'll, mealy mouth. Um, Would you say mealy mouth perhaps? <laughs> yes, perhaps mealy mouth. Uh, <laughs> I, I, can, I, I want to throw a question to you, Jennings, um, uh, which is, um, you know, based on, on your ethics, um, the, the, the baby is entitled to individual rights and, and therefore should not be terminated. It would be, um, and, and, we, and the state has a legitimate role in um, uh, protecting the baby from a woman that wants to abort it. Theoretically, if a baby is born, it's a live child, and uh, it is going to die unless the mother gives it mm. a kidney. And for some reason, she did not want to give it a kidney. Would you legally require her to do that? Uh, I don't think so, but I don't know. That's a really good question. That's, I, good question. I, that's it's a it, it's a I've thought about it before. I have not come to a conclusion yet. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to that. My 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 default answer would be no. But I recognize I recognize the trap uh, that, that you're putting me in there. And, and it's a, it's a legitimate question, by the way, really quickly, because I don't think I've stated this in anywhere in this conversation. I do want to be upfront about, uh, my, something about my position. Um, when it comes to the mother's life, mm. the birthing person's life, uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> we're going to alienate not... all of Heaton's audience just based yeah, on that yeah. alone. <laughs> I, uh, it, it, when it comes to that person's life, I'm not anti-abortion. I do think that that is a decision that has to be made between the, the, her and the doctor at that point. And, and perhaps the father, if the father is on the scene, if that's something, but, but definitely between the, the person giving birth and the doctor. Um, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm, I am in that sense. I, I do think that, that when it becomes the trolley problem, mm -hmm. the, the choice is the mother's there, are, there are, ectopic pregnancies where nobody's going to win everybody's going to die going to not could going to and in those cases i mean you have to make a choice and um and so i i i would not I, I wouldn't stand in the way of that um rape and incest i'm a little bit less uh sure about but if you were to tell me well we're going to take all abortion off the table except for rape and incest and the mother's life i would i would i would i would go with that um, Raven incest is a really tricky one, much like the, the kidney question that, that Heaton just asked me. Um, there are gray areas to this. And I think anyone who thinks there are not, um, is not really paying attention to the situation. Mm -hmm. I think also the rape and incest one incest, maybe less. So, uh, it becomes very tricky as we know from lots and lots of cases and lots of me too related conversations is like, at what point is it rape? And oh yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a whole Pandora's and, box. Right. And so, 
So I also could imagine a world where if we did pass the legislation that you're describing, Jennings, where we say, OK, no abortion, except if if the 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 uh, life is the current life is in danger or rape and incest is like we would start to see a lot of accusations of rape <laughs> For sure. or, or admissions of rape on behalf of the the father, basically, just to right. use the abortion. Right. And so we have all be these complicated one. Yeah, that would be that'd be that's that'd be rough. You know, actually, and it might be bad for like the world of understanding and minimizing and educating around rape. <laughs> like, yeah, no, yeah. I for sure. Yeah, really yeah that would that, that would I, I would almost say because, again, we're mm-hmm. dealing with my point of view where where we are terminating a life. I would almost say that you would need to be able to prove it in a court of law before. Right before doing that. But as quickly as our justice system moves, the baby would already be in kindergarten. Right, right. Um, like once they graduate from high school, we're going to execute this one. Yeah. No, I, 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 had, I had never thought about the effect of if, if rape were a carve out exception, how that would affect um, policy implementation. That's a really good point, Andrea. Like the, the yeah. I'm, I am the like, first of all, I'm the only person I know over the age of 18 who's ever changed their mind about this. I'm definitely <laughs> the only person that's ever done it because somebody explained policy analysis to me. And I went, you're right. This would be very difficult to legislate. Uh, I, I had Can already you just be president. What do we need to do? <laughs> but put right. Jennings and me in your the, cabinet somewhere. The, the, the thing that tipped me over, because I, I had I'd become a materialist. I was no longer um, of the idea that there's a soul. Right. And I was like, mm-hmm. yep, I, I think at some point it's a a blob. At some point it's a baby. I don't know where. So I'm going to default on the life similar to Jennings position. Um, uh, somebody uh, asked me, what, what about the um, uh, what if the woman's life was at risk? And I was like, yes. And, and she went, OK. What if the doctor says there's a 90% chance of mm. death? And I'm like, absolutely. 60% chance of death. Yes. 40% chance of death. Yeah. 8% chance of death. And I was like, I, I kind of got to the point where I was like, yeah, I don't know how you would ever actually, if that's going to be in, and it should, I don't know how you'd ever actually right. get to the point. And, and, you and there is a just, real chance of death in every yeah. pregnancy. And you, and you could have doctors, sure. doctors could say like, like if you had a very pro-choice doctor, they, they would exaggerate. Um, so I, I, and like the rape thing too, like that's actually, I did not even thought about that. You'd probably see an increase in people claiming rape. Um, well, you, you also would maybe move the definition around rape or, or there'd be a different word added to it because I'm thinking about cases where it's like the sex is consensual, but the dude oversimplifying the person with the penis, right? The dude says, oh, I'm, I'm using a condom. I'll pull out. And then they don't. So you thought you were consenting to safe sex in quotes because there's always a chance, but you weren't. And so it's like, what is what does that count as? <laughs> okay, I want to I want to alienate all the people that have liked me up to this point and Let's say, do it. I'm not sure that rape and incest would actually factor into my prescribed legislation. And the, mm. the reason I say that is um, from a first principles perspective, I have a very, very dim view of the government telling who can and cannot have kids with who. Uh, I don't like the idea of inbreeding. It is not something that appeals to me. I think it's very imprudent. Uh, I particularly want to give a shout out to monarchs listening to the podcast right now. You guys really need to expand the gene pool. Yeah. Um, that being said, uh, I, I like personally, I don't think the government ought to have the right to say that somebody uh, can't have kids. And and maybe if 20 percent of the public wanted to bang their sister, I would change my <laughs> mind about that. But given right. that demonstrably yeah. like a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of weirdos ever are ever going to want to do that consensually. Literally, the only case I know is in Game of Thrones. So, yes, it's it's <laughs> like I think what, but they're twin. I mean, they're fraternal twins. So where, it's where, where you could see, as I think very sadly, you could see instances where it is a case of rape, where a family member has raped. A, a young girl and like in that situation i'm like that is absolutely horrible but the predominant factor for me there is rape that said and this is where i'm going to start alienating people i don't know that rape would would modify my proposed policy considerations for, for this reason if somebody wanted to get an abortion in their first trimester and they went by the way it's rape i would go it doesn't matter you can just get it i don't think it's a kid right. like i i'm very sorry and i'm very happy to provide you counseling and such but it really doesn't affect this you, did, you, you don't need to fill out that box for me to be on board with this Conversely, if, if like a week before birth, somebody went, this was rape and I changed my mind, uh, I'd be like, I'm, I'm sorry, we're a week before the due date. This is a baby. Like, mm. like the, the fact that it was demonstrably created in a horrible manner that I'm very sorry about does not alter the moral status of the child about to be born. Um, so I, I don't know that it would affect, like, I, I think I'd still stick with my kind of viability bright line. I, I would agree. Like if, if I agreed with your position that, that you, um, 
well, I don't, I don't want to state your position, but if, but if I were on your side of the, whether or not this clump of cells is a human being, uh, I think I would completely agree with you policy wise. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Given that I'm not, it would it would be a complicated so, thing in my world. Let, let me then lob this at you guys, because I've, I've made my policy position clear, and I've been kind of thinking about that, making this. Um, you all have stated that you're broadly pro-life or broadly pro-choice. You haven't actually said what, what that means mm. from a policy perspective. So I don't know, Andrea, when you say pro-choice, if, if you are like, it should just always be the, the right of the mom. The government should not be involved in any capacity. You can uh, kill up to age 18. That's the, right. no, I'm kidding. Yeah. So like, like, <laughs> so, so where, where are you at? And also yeah. Jennings, where are you at? Yeah. Okay. I think that's a great question. And I will be, I'll be the first to admit because I'm the first one speaking and answer that I, I think that a shortcoming for me personally, I'm not going to put this on the whole left, uh, is that I tend to get so wound up in us versus them that I don't think about the policy with the level of nuance that I should. And like, what do I actually stand for? I get very wound up on the label and the activism. But I would say that something around, I I would probably put my line, Keaton, further along in a pregnancy than you. I'd be a bit more forgiving because it is, you can go a long time without knowing that you're pregnant weirdly mm-hmm. uh maybe not which, weirdly. Which, I don't know. for the record i do think is a weakness to my position because that is something yeah. that like um if if you could guarantee that that all women would know by x time then yeah. i would have a lot less sympathy for going past that line but it's it's yeah. my understanding that you can miss a period there are situations where so and i i don't know the data on that i i yeah. don't i don't know um i don't know the point at which you ought to be able to know um, right i mean because there's like all those reality shows are like i didn't know i was pregnant and it's like i don't i don't yeah, but so and and we we don't have to get into this, and I don't mean this as a listen to my trauma, but I was pregnant and I had an abortion at 12 weeks, which is pretty far and pretty late because I had no idea. And the circumstances were such that I thought I was having extremely safe sex and I was misled, basically, mm-hmm. which is part of why I thought of the the rape kind of asterisk. Uh and and I, I, you know, I took the decision seriously and, and it was, I spent a few days, whatever. Uh, but, but 12 weeks is pretty far. And most of the legislation that I'm seeing is way, is proposing or is way before that. So anyway, so, so to state, and I'm very grateful that I could, uh, but to state the, but I wish I had caught it sooner. Cause then you could do like a pill as opposed to the whole thing, whatever. Uh, uh, my, my actual stance is that anyone should be able to get an abortion up to some point and I would be pretty lenient on it. And and I, I want to say I'm making this up. I don't know the the medicine here, maybe to the end of the second trimester. Am I going to get murdered in the street for saying that? And I don't know. That's actually the the ruling from Roe v. Wade. That is it. Okay. All right. I was like, Oh, there's even what, one thing that I have a, a gap on in my own thinking on this is in cases of profound, you know, the mother, the parent, the profound birth defects that you don't really diagnose until very, very late in the pregnancy and the ethics and moral choices around, do we continue the pregnancy and hope this child survives? What do we do if it's like, they're going to be very seriously disabled and the parents are going to have to care for this. And they, they, all these horrible stories. And, And generally I err on the side of like, I don't know, keep, keep the disabled kid. <laughs> right. But I have a gap there where it's like, well, at, at what point is someone so unhealthy that in the, in the third trimester or the, the third trimester and you die, I don't know what stage you diagnose yeah. these things. Like I'm thinking like cerebral palsy down but like really severe cases where you just like the person, I don't know. Which, which so, I, I uh, swing, most I cases swing. are actually diagnosed considerably earlier than that. Are they? You, okay. You, you do, you do get situations where, where they don't, for whatever reason, they don't catch something until later on. And, but it's and, rare. Are they like? I mean, they, they genetically test now, and they do. Um, although I think I, I think that's voluntary. I don't think okay. everybody does it automatically. But you can genetically test now, and um, I think they know pretty early on. That being said, I'm actually along with uh, let's say rape and incest. I'm I'm sympathetic to your position on that too. Um, I I, I, I think know. I swing left on that one. Like I mm. I think that. Um, 
if if you can, again if you catch it early enough, he, I don't. He's think just got a he's just got a quarter. He's flipping. Yeah. I know and with this pendulum is swinging. The, Here we go. I, I, if, if, you, if you catch it early enough, I don't think it makes a moral difference. If you're like you know, okay, we're how we're much in, and we think the kid, we think that the the fetus that would become a kid is going to have Down syndrome. We don't want to deal with that. Again, I don't think at the beginning it is a child, so I don't think there's anything immoral about that. When you get into like um, these horror cases, which I've heard many recently talking to my my uh, strident pro-choice friends. Uh, and they bring up uh, many instances that I'm sure people listening to the show um, would find in their own lives with very little digging of uh, a, a woman that really desperately wants to have a baby um, that is planning on being a mom that discovers there's this horrible thing that's going to happen. Uh, and one of my friends, um, friend of a friend, um, they, they've been trying to have a baby. They wanted a baby. They, they went to fertility, all this stuff. And the, the baby um, turns out late in the game um, was going to um, uh, be very deformed and probably die within a couple mm -hmm. of weeks of being born. And, and like, I'm like, first of all, that's a horrible situation to be in. I'm so sad that she had to deal with that, but like, I'm just in her case, I'm going to opt on whatever she wants. Uh, if, if the kid's going to die either way, I, I totally get going. I don't want to have to, the, the child's going to die. I'd rather it, it be kind of taken care of clinically. I, I, I get mm -hmm. that. And then I also like late in the game, because again, most of the cases with abortion, like what is it? 93% of abortions take place in the first trimester. Um, it's, it's a fractional amount of cases that we're talking about that take place in the second and, and vanishingly few in the third trimester. If we get to the second or third trimester and, and that data comes up, I, I, I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm inclined to default on the position of the mother to make that judgment call on the, the quality of life for the prospective child. Um, mm -hmm. Because I can, if, if, if it turned out that I was going to have a kid that had a Down syndrome, we caught that late, I'd be like, probably going to be a real fun kid. I like people with Down syndrome. They're real happy. I wouldn't have a problem with that. Um, but uh, same token, though, I can think of situations where it's like, oh, God, that kid's going to have such a horrible life that I would, as their parent, want to terminate it out of, out of respect for them. Um, so I, I think I'd go left on that one. I think, I, I mean, I think that, that it might depend. Yeah. It, it's possible that taking those on a case by case basis would be the best way to go. I don't know. I, it, it's another gray area for me. Um, there, there's certainly some gray areas in all of this. Uh, Wait, so, so, so yeah. Andrew, can you repeat your uh, governor joined Jones Roy? Can, can right. you repeat okay. your preferred policy prescription just so I have this? Uh, first, I want to know, are governors higher ranking than senators? Which do I want to be? I feel like senators uh, are more powerful. You know, for, for abortion purposes, it could go either way. Uh, I think All you're right. going to see legislation in both camps. Pick, All right, pick, I'm the senator pick governor. Pick your office. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you're the Huey P. Long. You're governor <laughs> and Senator Governor Jones Roy. Senator Governor Jones Roy. So my, uh, I guess, well, okay, before I state my my thing in one pithy way, I will say that one other thing that, that this brings up for me that I think is something that I haven't thought through at all until this conversation, so thank you both, is, okay, if I'm the parent and I agree with you, Heaton, that as a, as a uh, I could choose if I know the quality of life is going to be horrible and they're going to be in pain and they're going to die in two years and all of that, that like, you know, it could be the day before the due date, deal with it clinically if that's better for you. Like, I, I think that making that judgment about the quality of life makes sense. But now I'm finding myself think, well, what if the judgment about quality of life is about external factors? So going back to where we started the conversation, I'm in insane amounts of poverty. I am a drug addict. I am at risk of being attacked by an abuser. I this, I that. And, the, and it's going to be a circumstance that's so horrible. I find that less defensible, but I sort of wonder where I personally mm. would draw the line because Jennings, I was very persuaded by what you said earlier about like, who am I to say that these circumstances are so bad that, you know, what if it's a war zone? You know, I don't, I don't know how to think about my agreement with Heaton's logic yeah. alongside my agreement with Jennings logic on the internal versus external. I, 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 do I, think, I don't I, think I, I would think side on the circumstantial. I, I think I would, I would say no on the circumstantial. I'd go Jennings mm. on that. If it's just like, okay. I, I've decided the, the, the life we're providing independent of the body itself is going to be a bad one at that point, late in the pregnancy. Okay. I don't think I'd buy. What yeah, if you're and, in a volcano? No, I'm kidding. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jennings, go ahead. <laughs> Literally in a volcano. In it. Um, <laughs> no, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think there's something to that. That's why I said, uh, actually, that, that I think you'd have to go on a case-by-case -case basis mm. because there are people, I mean, my, my, I have, my youngest son has autism. Mm. Um, it didn't show up when we had him uh, genetically uh, tested in utero, um, but it happened. And had it shown up, in, you know, in, in genetic testing, we would have still chosen to 
to have my son. And I'm, I'm in, insanely grateful. I love my son um, beyond words. Um, now, that doesn't mean that every situation is like that because people live with autism. But, you know, people live with autism and have horrible lives, too. Mm-hmm. It's a roll of the dice. I mean, I, I think a lot of uh, a lot of these situations where something is the roll of the dice, we have to recognize that it is that. Mm-hmm. Um so anyway, sorry, back yeah, to your back yeah. to you, back to your ruling. Yes, to my back ruling. To your, back to your legislation. But I think it's a good point. And it's it's you know, we are all trying to find certainty in a world that is fundamentally probabilistic and that will always have gray areas and trade-offs that not everyone is gonna make the same choice over. Okay, so my ruling as Senator Governor Jones Roy is of End Carolina, of tri- merged just one Carolina. Of Carolina and the Dakotas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man, I'll never be able to set foot in any of those states again. Uh, is that, yeah, I'm separating and emerging. Okay. Much like a fee. Okay. Uh, is, is up to the end of the second trimester, anyone can get an abortion, no questions asked, insurance covers it, it's safe, it's clean, it's accessible and in, Somehow we're making sure that everyone has access to it and and states can't make it illegal, blah, 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 all that Roe v. Wade stuff. And then in the third trimester, I would say, is this I would agree with Jennings on it's it's case by case basis. It's it's the family, it's the parents, it's the person talking with their doctor. And if maybe deferring to a medical judgment about about who's, you know, trolley problem wise, like where where our values are as the person uh, carrying the, at this point, I would probably say child or infant or beat it. I don't know what I would say. Um, anyway, case by case with deference to medical authorities. Can, can I, can you clarify something too, uh, Governor yeah. Congress, uh, Governor Senator? Governor um, Congress. <laughs> when when, when yeah. you say insurance would cover it, um, I, I assume you mean by that, that there would be a law requiring insurance mm. to cover it, right? Well, God that's going to be a flashpoint. That is going to be a flashpoint. So I guess so. I don't I I embarrassingly don't have enough of an understanding of American like how the various insurance systems work and Medicare, Medicaid and all of that. But what I basically mean is it should be and I'm putting this in heavy air quotes to anyone listening, affordable to everyone. So so we would need to do something where perhaps we would indeed mandate that insurance companies would require this. Uh, and I don't like the word mandate. Uh, and I know Jennings, you really don't like the word mandate. I assume you don't like the word. You like the word mandate even less. Keaton, I assume you're mealy mouth about it. I don't care for it, uh, <laughs> but I've got I, I've I've <laughs> le- I've less animated. Yeah, uh, I think that we, you know what I worry. But the reason I bring all of that up is to say that you know there's sort of in some ways um, in in some cases almost no upper bound to how much medical care could cost. And so I would want to be mindful in the policy to guarantee in some way, again, air quotes, that people who have access to abortions and have access to abortions in a way that isn't like exponentially expensive. So it's- Isn't isn't that currently how Planned Parenthood works? I think so. But they also, I think there are limitations to where they can operate. They're like donor based in a lot of ways. And so I would like something a little bit more robust. I think Uh, Planned Parenthood gets federal funding, but only for contraceptive uses and and actual healthcare stuff. Yeah. Guidance of family planning. I don't believe there's any federal money that comes out of public coffers to to purposes of abortion. So, so for example, and I don't know, and I don't know how much this varies by state and I should do my research, but, uh, my abortion costs through Pan- Planned Parenthood, I want to say $800. And I had it. Uh, I, I barely had it. I was a grad student at the time, but I could easily imagine not having that. And I don't know. I'm, I assume there are policies in place where they would have covered it for me if I showed financial trouble or whatever. And there are a lot of resources out there for those sorts of things. And people donate specifically for those things. But I would enjoy it. Not enjoy. I would prefer if it were more straightforward and you could go to anywhere you went, you, you like cost wasn't a concern any more than like going to see your primary care physician or something like that. Okay. I don't know what, uh, what form that policy takes. So, so uh, very legal in the first trimester and second trimester, probably illegal, but with exceptions in a case by case basis in the third trimester and, and some kind of public assistance, be it a mandate to insurance companies or a subsidy that would make abortion affordable to people in those first trimesters. Okay, right. great. Uh, Governor Jennings, you are- And governor- the third if needed. 
and, and the, the third, and if, third needed. if needed. I'm okay. only a governor. No, no, no. Hold on. You're, what you're, the hell, simul- man? you're simultaneously the governor of Alaska, Hawaii, and Maine. You're you're okay. a, you're you're governor, governor, governor Jennings. You, okay, you all right. Governor uh, cubed. Governor, governor oh, cubed. Yeah, gov cube, as they call you. Gov cube. <laughs> uh, so, gov cube Jennings. Uh, what what is your preferred policy? Uh, all right. So so now we'll invoke the Handmaid's Tale. Um, no, um, I would uh, more bonnets. Okay. Yes, that's yeah. how he got elected. People love Margaret Atwood, and he would he would <laughs> throw right. some references out. Elizabeth Moss was his running mate. <laughs> I I would uh, I would ban abortions with certain exceptions. Um, I I think that uh, we situations of of the mother's life we've already covered that those those would be um, relegated to the doctor and and the person giving birth. Um, I I believe all uh, medical procedures of of any seriousness uh, probably go before a uh, review board of some sort, but if they don't, they should. Um, so that, so that we are cutting down on, because if, if it's like what you said earlier, Andrew, the, the, at the point where this thing is the only way that it's legal, all of a sudden we see an uptick in this thing. Um, obviously every abortion is going to be, oh, it was the mother's life for the babies. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that, that, um, some sort of review to make sure that that is as above board as possible would be would probably be good. Um, situations of Wait, rape did and you incest. Just kick the legs out underneath of the reason that I became pro-choice. Do I have to? I'm, I'm sorry. Continue. Please wait, continue. wait, what? No, nothing. I'm just making a <laughs> comment. Please continue. No, Heaton, back. What? Oh, I, well, I said earlier that the, <laughs> the, the, the reason that I like the thing that, that ticked me over was the the health of the mother probability. Like, like, mm. like, how, how would you? And, and Jennings is like, have uh, three doctors just assess it. I'm like, huh. Uh, um, I'm still where well, I am. Please continue. Okay. okay. I was like, have point, we done it? I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm still, I'm still legislating from a pro-choice point of, or sorry, pro-life point of view. Um, almost gotcha. And, uh, almost gotcha. Yeah, almost. <laughs> uh, yeah. In your uh, head. Here and, we go. Yeah. And, yeah. So it would be, um, it, it would be legal in situations of, of the mother's health, uh, by which I, Again, here's that pragmatic side of me. I do not mean the psychological health of the mother. I mean the physical health of the mother. Um, and if you want state-sponsored um, psychiatric treatment, fine. I can. I'll allocate money to that. Um, uh, situations of rape and incest. Um, as I said before, I'm I'm gray on that, but I would be inclined to lean more toward the the choice side, uh, at least at the moment. Um, and, and grant that as a possibility. That is a vanishingly small percentage of, of abortions performed in the United States. It's far less than 10%. Hmm. So, um, you know, that, that it, it, if it does not solve the problem, it is at the very least seriously curtails the problem, um, what I perceive to be a problem. Um, and uh, let's see. So then that leaves uh, the question that we were talking about with, with physical deformity, where you're, you're, I, I would, I, I think I would go with the, I believe Andrew, you were the one who said that, that it would need to be within a certain time frame within the first, I, I would say maybe within the first trimester beyond that. If you, if something is discovered in the second or third trimester, that is just absolutely the, the child is not going to survive. Um, then I might leave that up also to the choice of the mother and the doctor. So, I mean, there's, there's definitely some carve outs in my position. Um, but, but, but in, in your case though, Jennings, you're, you're not saying it would be legal at the first trimester. It would be illegal throughout. It's just that Correct. Re- regardless of timing, there would be some exceptions for possibly rape and incest. Yes. For a qualified threat to the mother's life and possibly some other things, but basically yeah. your, your base template is abortion is illegal unless there's a compelling medical reason otherwise. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. And, and, and I want to say something uh, to that. And I, and I please take this in the absolute like best faith possible way, because I, I don't mean this in any way to be um, to be offensive or hurtful. I, I, I I'm not necessarily uh, it's not aimed just at you. This is aimed at our entire society. Uh, this is aimed at our entire culture. And I will refrain from invoking Godwin's law uh, and instead use slavery. But if you were to time travel, if I were to try time travel today back to 1850, um, 
I would I would side with the abolitionists, of course, because I come. From, yeah, <laughs> I actually like coughed up. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who are just listening, <laughs> Eaton just did a, yeah, did a, woo. Um, yeah, so I would side with the abolitionists, of course, because I believe that they're, you know, that their Good point of days. view is correct. <laughs> However, uh, I would not feel the same way about someone who viewed slavery as a God-given right or a, or a United States-given right as I would somebody who feels that way today. So if if Heaton believes that slavery is actually good and we should bring it back, which I changed I my think... position on, I'm now <laughs> anti I see you flipping them. If Heaton believes that, uh, I think Heaton is very likely an evil person uh, for believing that. I don't necessarily feel that about the person back in 1850 that I'm that I'm walking up to on the plantation because he exists in a period of what we recognize now as cognitive dissonance concerning the the rights of of a fellow human being okay that and it it doesn't mean that he's stupid it means that he exists in his time um this is why i don't i I don't like the idea of um taking you know people from the past who had opinions that we now think are horrible and just completely castigating them uh, across the board because i think you have to look at each person individually i agree with you on that for the record yes Okay, so the so so that person holds a an opinion that we now in the future looking back find absolutely abhorrent, but we're able to look at them and go, okay, I understand why he feels that way because in the time frame where he's grown up, the the things that he's seen, it, it much of it points to, uh, well, of course I have the right to own property, and because I have the right to own property, I have the right to own slaves. Um, so, I'm coming back to the present and imagining someone coming from the future to this time frame, And here's where I could be wrong. Um, I would imagine that someone from the future will look at this and say, my God, you're killing people. You're killing babies. You can dress it up in a, whatever fancy way you want to dress it up. But the truth of the matter is every abortion that you perform is a, at the very least, a potential human being. Mm-hmm. the very least, if not an actual human being. And as a result of that, um, you know, that, that that's when I think about that, I think my, my goodness, I don't want to be thought of 50 or a hundred years from now as part of this horrific thing. And I do think it's horrific. I mean, I'm, I'm again, trying to be very good faith with you. We disagree, but I don't think you're a horrible person. I do think that you might be the product of your time, mm-hmm. um, the product of, of a of a collective cognitive dissonance that's been built up, particularly since Roe, but 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 even was probably building before that. That that is finding ways to justify something that, that ultimately is murder, and mm-hmm. I don't, I hate even using the word murder because I don't want to say, well, you've had an abortion, so you're a murderer. I hate that. I hate that point of view. Uh, I've known people who've had that point of view. I've been a person who has had that point of view. I don't hold that point of view. I think that 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 you uh, acted within um, understood parameters of of morality that differ from mine. Mm -hmm. And if I had a way to push a button and persuade you that 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 it's wrong, I would. But I don't I, I, I just I wanted to make sure that I clarify I don't think of people who are pro li- or pro uh, choice today automatically as murderers. Um, I think there probably are people among them who are, but there, there's again, there's shitheads on every side. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to clarify that. Shitheads on every side could be the title of this episode if we decide <laughs> uh, not to start with that we're all getting canceled. No, I I appreciate you saying that, and it's very. Well, I less appreciate the part about about being a murderer, but uh, honestly, it kind of sounds badass. Don't don't quote me on that. All right. Uh, well, I, I don't actually think you're no, a murderer. you don't. I guess. OK, yeah, yeah. And, and I will say to I don't know if I was like overly glib about it, but I, I took all of that very seriously, not to justify my decision. And and there were and it almost sounds trivializing to say like there were there was a period just after the abortion that I was like, I'm a monster. I'm horrible. And I like could stop crying. It was all uh 
Good. But now I feel surprisingly fine. So <laughs> I, I don't I don't mean to make make light of any of it. And I guess I would just go back to say that, like, I didn't take the decision lightly. I I, I appreciate your your pers- the the long view, like the historical view on this. And it's it's almost funny if we weren't talking about something so grim, because I think that people on the left. I'll just speak for myself. I think I think of people on the right in a similar way where I think, and this is not related just to abortion, but on, on everything uh, that we disagree sure. about. And I think, gosh, it must suck to know that eventually you're going to be demonstrated to be wrong. And, <laughs> and by the and way, I, you're probably right about a bunch of things that the right believes. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, the, the arc of justice is long, but it bends in the right direction. And just to quote, <laughs> you know, be a white person here, quoting a black person and totally stealing that for my own purposes. But like, yeah, like I think of gay marriage, I think, you know, all the transgender rights, I think we're in an ugly fight on that front right now, but I, I sort of like, it, maybe this is where I come to the elite piece where it's like, but I know I'm right. And eventually I'll either persuade you or drag you slash the country over there. And I just sort of assume. And, and when I look at things like, women got the right to vote, black people got the right to vote, this, that, interracial marriage, like, like I That's see them all. Slope. Well, I see them all as wins <laughs> for my team. And yeah. I say, how could you feel like you're doing anything but just clawing desperately at the past? And so I, I love that you've flipped it on me and said, I think that looking back, we'll go back and say, Andrea, you are in the, you know, the pro-slavery camp of our time. Because I've been sitting here very, very uh, comfortably saying, like, it doesn't matter how much we disagree because I'm going to show that I'm right. My my team is going to be right. right in the long run. And you're like, no, it's not. So we're both just sitting here feeling sorry for each other. I think it's what's going on. <laughs> I, I've got well, two, two, two observations and a question. Right. Uh, uh, observation one, actually, Andrea, I do think that history will find you right on being vegan. Uh, And this is something that Jennings and I have talked about. I just mentioned this in the cognitive dissonance episode that I did recently, um, where I suspect that um, I I hope I have grandkids. I think Jennings will have grandkids. I suspect that Jennings grandkids will talk to us and go, so did you have to eat meat? And we'll be like, nope. Uh, (laughs) But like, but it it wasn't available. And we're like, no, it was all over the place, actually. But it, it didn't taste good. No, it was pretty tasty. Like, yeah. so you, 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 but did you know that they were like giving these cows horrible lives and then killing them in this torturous manner? We didn't like to think about it because it tastes like, I, I think that like the, the point, if, if there gets, comes a point where there's like Petri beef, I think that meat mm. eaters, myself included, will be viewed as, as monsters. Uh, there if, almost is Petri beef. Isn't yeah, there? there is. It's just, well, there is. Not, it's just uh, not affordable yet. But, but we, ah. we, we'll look back on that. I think the way we presently look back on like bear baiting. Uh, or, or like, like the fact that bear baiting, bear bear baiting was a popular sport in England, um, uh, back, back around the time they were using terms like quickening where, uh, (laughs) like, like it was like cockfighting with a bear. And that was like a common town thing. It's also like the reason we have bulldogs is because they were like, they were bred to fight bulls for sport. And we rightly view that as horrific. But back in the day, that was the scene. Uh, that being said, Andrew, you are a murderer because you killed that guy with your Buick. Uh, I was there. (laughs) I helped you bury the body. He was 30, uh, but I thought I thought his circumstances were so terrible that he needed to be removed. I just I just needed to catch my train. It was like, I don't want to fucking get the cops involved in this. Uh, I, I, I do have a question, Andrew, if, if I can ask you. Mm. Um, in, we go. in my experience, like not in terms of the ethics of the conversation, in terms of the uh, in terms of the timbre of the conversation, I find that I do not have difficulty talking to pro-life people. That might be because I'm from Oklahoma and I just kind of sound pro-life or maybe because I, I have like a, a starting point that's more sympathetic or something. I don't know. Um, but I'm told by my lady friends that are pro-choice that their experience is oftentimes far more stilted than mine is. And they tell me that the reason for that is that uh, regardless of whether I'm pro-life or pro-choice, it, it is indeed an abstract thing for me. It's only something that I can uh, present input to a system on. Mm-hmm. Whereas um, according to my lady friends that are pro-choice, there are pro-life people that view them as potential murderers or active murderers. Has, has this been your case uh, or, or, or are you not encountering anybody? Like, have you, have you experienced rancor either by virtue of your decision or just your pro-choice position? Not... Not really, in the sense that uh, uh, Governor Cubed Jennings here saying that even the sentence, I'm not saying you're a murderer, 
hearing the sentence, you're a murderer in the middle of that broader caveat, or I'm, I'm probably mis misquoting you, but even though you were like, I don't think this, but I could see how people would say this, like even in that very careful way that he structured it, that was pretty much the most direct rancor that I've heard. And I was pretty indirect. The only other is I wrote an essay about the experience on my blog in like 2014 or something. You can all read it if you want. It's not very interesting. Uh, it's pretty run of the mill, I should say, as far as abortion stories go. Sorry, this is probably very insensitive. Just a casual murder story. Uh, for sorry. the record, if I yeah. if I had yeah. your point of view, I I don't see any problem with it being funny. No, oh, okay. right. yeah, yeah, no, I think, like, <laughs> yeah. If, in a way, not that I want to be pro-choice, but if I did, it yeah. largely would be because I would be I would feel an enormous relief and and yeah. like hey, I don't have to worry about this as a moral issue. This is yeah. just, I've got to convince these idiots issue. Right. I, right. From your point of view, like make jokes away. I get it. Oh, thanks. Like, it <laughs> seems like it is funny. Yeah. Like, yeah. You can't have do, an abortion, but you can joke about it, Andrea. <laughs> I think, yeah. what is the, the Seinfeld thing? Like, I think they got an abortion just for the jokes. And this yeah, upsets yeah, yeah, you yeah, as yeah. a pro-life person? No, it upsets me as a comedian. By the way, as a pro-life person, I appreciate humor and I am so anti uh censorship in the in the right. field of humor that i think abortion jokes if they're funny i right. like them i don't care right um but anyway i don't know if you yeah. were being no. if you were being that if you were being apologetic for me or for the listeners if it's oh, for okay. me don't okay. worry about it is what oh, I'm saying. okay yeah. uh i apologize as such a matter of instinct that i don't even know who i was apologizing <laughs> for i think just for my own existence I like accept your apology yeah, right <laughs> i think this is coming from the fact that and now we're gonna get real weird uh I probably should have been aborted. And then that's the nature of my age. All right. That was too dark. Okay. Oh, so it's uh, a joke. Good. I was like, shit. I just it made is sure a joke. It was a joke. J it Jenna, is a strap, joke. strap in. We're doing some counseling. Okay. It is a joke, but it's also, now I'm really oversharing, like the main theme that I talk about with my therapist, because I was like an accident and I don't think I was wanted and blah, blah, blah. So there could be some deep shit going on here. Oh, I, I forget. Oh, have I gotten any rancor? I get, you know, I, I almost never talk about it on social media because it's always almost almost always a shit show. And then, oh, yeah, oh so I wrote the essay about it. And I, I think I just tread, which is part of the reason I wanted to have this conversation, is that I tread in such liberal circles that I got a lot of support and people saying, mm. we thank you for sharing this. Da, 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 da. Uh, I got some ugly stuff on something I posted recently on TikTok, but it was more that the comments devolved into like a vaccines argument that I just stayed out of because I'm irresponsible. Uh, if anything, I would say that the like, and I'm sort of wandering in my thoughts here, but one other thing I haven't said that I, I want to say is that I'm a very indecisive person and I can't choose, you know, what to order at a restaurant, never mind, choose whether to terminate a pregnancy. And so when this situation happened, it was not an, it was, it was pretty obvious to me in my like body, what I, what I wanted and that this was not a good choice for me at that time. But I, my big concern leading up to the procedure and in thinking about whether or not it was the right move. And I read all this stuff online of crying and this and that was like, am I going to later on regret having done it? And I feel great relief, but also wonder about my own morals that I feel no regret. And I almost never think about it except to think about how glad I am. I don't have children. All of that is to say, I've never met a parent. I'm just sort of rambling here, but I've never met a parent who was like, maybe there's like the odd essay in like Vogue. That's like, I hate being a parent, but you still love your kids. So like, I don't know the counterfactual of how much richer and more wonderful maybe my life would be if I had had a kid or what would have happened. But I, I guess I, I, the reason I take all of this so personally is that I think, I don't think my life is great, but I think I would not have been able to do a lot of the things that I really am glad I got to do had I not had that option. And so, so one of the reasons I find it so hard to think about other views is that it's like, it would almost be so deeply hypocritical for me to come around and understand what the pro-life view is. It's like, I had this cancer saving drug or cancer killing life saving cancer drug, but I want to ban it for everyone after me. Like I almost feel physically incapable of seeing, of coming or imagining a world where I come around on the other side, even though what you're saying makes a lot of sense to me. I don't think I, mean, I answered yeah. any question. Those are my thoughts. No, well, I, I, I want to respond the, though, to what you said. Okay. Part of this. Yeah. Um, so I think, um, 
it would be very difficult to come around to that. I think it would be difficult, not because it would be hypocritical. I don't think it would be hypocritical. Uh, And by the way, I'm not trying to sell you, but I'm just saying, I don't think it would be hypocritical at all because it would just mean you changed your mind. Yeah. Um, And I don't think it's the, I had the cancer saving drug and then I want to ban it for everybody because once, once that shift has been made, it would be, ah, this was, this was a wrong decision to make. I shouldn't have made it, but I made it when I, when I, I hate to say didn't know any better because that sounds I'm not patronizing <laughs> you, but you know what I mean. And, I love it. Uh, yeah. And now I recognize that 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 was not the way I should have gone with it. Uh, I don't want other people to make the same mistake I made. I don't see that as hypocritical at all. Um, just like it wouldn't be hypocritical if I were to shift after this conversation mm-hmm. to being completely pro-choice and say, you know, I didn't see it that way before. Now I understand it. I don't think that this clump of cells is 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 a hu- is a person, um, and so I'm going to stop trying to, um, you know, legislate women's bodies um, because because I do believe in bodily autonomy. So if I had that, I don't think it would be me being hypocritical. It would just be me growing. And I mm. same same with what you're talking about. So I, I wouldn't. I mean, I wouldn't worry about that if I were you. All right. Um, <laughs> and 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 by the way. I just want to say this since we're still recording and I, I, I want to say it while we're recording. You are a lovely, lovely human being. I've never spoken to you before. <laughs> we've 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 worked projects around Heaton before, but never. I don't think we've ever actually talked before. You're a wonderful human being. I really have enjoyed like having a conversation with you about this because most of the people I talk to are either in an echo chamber, the echo chamber that I exist in, or uh, they are so stridently on the other side that I cannot have a conversation with him. Heaton is the rare exception to that rule. Uh, he and I have had some, some very good and lengthy conversations about this, um, but man, it's refreshing and it's wonderful. And uh, you're awesome. Well, thank you for saying that. What if I was yeah. like the end? No, I agree. Yeah, yeah the end. I agree. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm awesome. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, the feeling is very mutual. I, I really, respect that you agreed to even come and have this conversation with me because indeed we we know each other through Heaton but I don't think we we haven't met or even corresponded directly I just know Heaton has referenced you in the past so I knew you existed right. uh and you're you seem extremely thoughtful about all of this and it's it's helped me humanize what I perceive to be you know this monolith kind of enemy out there of people who just want to strip me of my rights and I I appreciate the the nuance and thoughtfulness that you shared from your side and the fact that you were willing to so respectfully uh engage with with my views so so thank you and if anything I've found myself thinking I don't know if anyone's ever going to listen to I, I any of the three of us ever again uh but at least the three like I would love to have another conversation about all the other cheerful topics that are going on sure. in the world uh anytime yeah. I keep telling Heaton that uh that he needs a uh more conservative voice on when you guys do your mm. your roundtable get-togethers um and uh yeah if if, if he uh, or you or anybody wants me to hop in there not, or not or only a conversation am I like this up for that jennings i think i can just declare you my co-host whenever i want and then fair enough <laughs> and then you can come on you are uh, gonna have to pay me at that point but you know you're gonna have to take it up <laughs> with the the eric union uh they're they're yeah. in charge of, of co-host that's part of the contract <laughs> Um, well, so so I'm I'm glad that we end on that positive note. Also, I did a bang up job. Everybody loves me. Heaton, Heaton you killed it. No, thank you, Heaton, for. Um, no, I feel like it would have been a lot more awkward. Nobody unsubscribed to Heaton. Yeah. Uh, be, be, before we sign off, and it's perfectly fine if we sign off there because I think that's a very good resting place to do it. But before we do that, is there anything that either of you still finds uh, acknowledging that you both disagree mm. with each other? Is there anything that you still find baffling that you want clarification on? Or alternately, just something that you don't think the other group understands that you would like them to understand. I have a question. Here is, uh, thank you for saying this, because there's, and there's definitely a million other things that we could keep talking about on this issue. But the one thing that I, that I have been turning over my head that I haven't said yet is I see, and I think it's a joke, but I don't totally know a lot of memes and stuff on the left saying, okay, if you aren't uh, okay with abortion, why don't we nip it in the bud even before that and make all men get uh, reversible vasectomies? Mm. And interesting. What do you think about that conservative people? You know, like that's basically where we list the whole argument <laughs> is, is. And then, and then if, if our, our setup is, if you say, no, 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 it's my body, we'd say, well, why is that different for people who are pregnant? Right. And so I don't know, have we, maybe I should open with this. Is that the ticket? 
just so reversible in, vasectomies. In my case, this is great. Is this like somebody else? Somebody else is going to pay for this, and I, I I don't have to worry about it till I want kids. This seems like a freebie. But Jennings, I, I feel so. like this is more designed for you. So you, I please feel like the respond. condom lobby will have something to say about it. But other than that, right. yeah, big condoms uh, have ruined this country. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a good question. I I I mean, I it would be like it would be hard to take it too seriously. I, I assume, like you said, that it's mostly a joke, but. Um, only uh, maybe it's not. And I, I'm just I, I think it's dissing. actually only a, it's a very good thought experiment. It. Like it's yeah. a very good one that raises yeah, the is. prospect is of like bodily autonomy. Yeah, sure. I I don't know that I. I mean, I'm not opposed. I'll tell you what I wouldn't be opposed to, and that would be like if it's available. Like if you made that available um, mm. as an option, like a cheap option. Sure, I'm okay with that. I mean, I'm okay. a, I'm fine with contraception being available to people. Um, like it's not. Uh, that 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 to me is not um i don't think that's a problem as far as forcing it on people okay i mean in the situation i, I guess what i would push back is i would say in a situation where there's a pregnancy the person is pregnant and in the situation where they're not uh where you're forcing you know temporary sterilization on them they have not actually gotten anyone pregnant at this mm. point presumably um and i and i don't say that to like defend male bodily autonomy and and say screw you to female aut uh, autonomy i don't mean that i just mean that like um there's there's not uh it, so as we said earlier it's it, i forget what the exact percentage is uh but it's 90 90 some percent of of all abortions uh, are not because of rape or incest. They're not because of the danger of the mother's life. They are what what people on the right call convenience abortions. Um, but you can you, there's a whole list of reasons why, but none of them have to do with what we were talking about. That would be for, for, for listeners, a, a less emotionally weighted term would be non therapeutic abortions. Yeah, no, convenience yeah. is interesting. It's not. I was thinking. I'm like, I don't love the word, but it's not wrong because it was. That's why I did it. I, I don't love the word either, but that is what they say. But it was more convenient than the alternative. Yeah. 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 Um, so because of that, because the overwhelming percentage of them are not, what did you say? Non-therapeutic? Mm -hmm. they're, they're not, okay. for, they're not because, for prescribed medical reasons. Yes. So because of that. Um, I like the idea that there could be a therapeutic abortion in the sense that like, oh, it just feels good. Like, <laughs> <it's> <laughs> just, <laughs> see, that's a funny abortion joke. There we go. That's, that's We're really getting good. there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So uh, because of that, because the overwhelming majority are not uh, are not that um, I would say that there is a difference between and, and this, by the way, would apply to women who wanted to be temporarily have their tubes tied as well, although I know mm -hmm. that's a much more complicated procedure, but um, it would apply across the board is what I'm saying. I don't think it's quite the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, if you wanted to make it available and, and make it cheap, I'm not opposed to that. Um, I, I'm not opposed to uh, to any of that. And my final Wait, hold on. point of baffling. Additional caveat, Jennings. What about publicly funded condoms or, or publicly funded birth control? Um, I don't know that I have a problem with that either. Um, with uh, yeah, I, I don't think so. I mean, I don't think that, that um, I don't think religious institutions should be forced to mm. uh, to do that because. Uh, they do exist as their own, their own entity, and they, you know, Catholic uh, institutions. They don't believe in that. They don't believe in condoms. I disagree with them, but I would not take away their religious ability mm -hmm. to their their ability to practice their religion in whatever way they see fit. Um, so I want actually to to kind of turn that around. My my point of bafflement, the final point of bafflement, um, would be um, I don't. And I, again, I, I mean this in the nicest possible way. I don't understand. I don't understand I, I, why there is less of a quality of sacredness applied to life. And I don't mean sacred in a religious sense. I don't mean having a soul. I don't mean any of that in a purely just from a purely humanist point of view. Um, like we do recognize the preciousness of life. In fact, I would think, and this is a 
this is where I also feel a little confused. I would think anyone who didn't think there was an afterlife would be more pro-life than someone who did. Hmm. Hmm. Um, because from if, somebody if, if who you had, have an afterlife, it's a premature exit. Whereas if you don't live in an afterlife, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I am a little bit confused by that. And I'm not accusing you of it directly. I'm just, there seems to be this pervasive, this is part of that cognitive business that I was talking mm-hmm. about. There seems to be a, per, a pervasive, um, I don't know, um, lack of thinking that way about human beings until they're born um, mm. versus this thing that's growing inside of me is going to for sure, 100% barring anything going wrong and them dying or me dying or whatever, barring that, this is going to become my child. This is going to become this, this miracle in, in some sense of life. Um, I just, I, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's, that's where the left is more pragmatic than the right and, and is trying to see things in what they consider uh, reality. Mm-hmm. But it's undeniable that in the overwhelming majority of cases, an aborted fetus would would have gone on. Heaton and I used to have this conversation about World War One and World War Two. Heaton actually brought this to my attention. I'd never thought of this before. He the said, fetuses you know, the, of history. Yeah. Okay. The real the real tragedy, uh, or one of the real tragedies of of something like World War One and World War Two, is that we will never know how much further along as a society we mm. might be technologically and otherwise. But for the loss of all of these probably, young people, there were probably a lot of Albert Einsteins that died in a ditch at age. Yeah. Right, and yeah. undoubtedly yes. there were a few Jeffrey Dahmers as well. But you know, again, it's that roll of the dice. And got to break and, a few eggs. To, okay, never mind. That's the yeah. problem with right. the world. Three, three Dahmers for every Einstein. <laughs> it's just about trade offs. I have to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> no, I just, I to me that that I think that's a that, that you can apply that same logic mm-hmm. and say. We've aborted, what is it, 64 million, I think 60 some million um, fetuses since Roe. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what, what potentiality did we snuff out? Right. That's a, I, that's I think a, that, a I think that one, yeah. I think that one does cut both ways though, Jennings. So, like, one of the things that um, the guys that wrote, what is it, uh, Freakonomics talk about, um, they, oh, they, yes. I, they, they, they posit that the, the dip in crime that happened in the 80s, I think the 70s and 80s, basically can be correlated to the advent of Roe versus Wade, and that uh, disproportionately, the, the people that are getting abortions are, are uh, people that probably weren't going to have a good home life for the kid. And so uh, basically, the, the people that were potentially going to enter these low-income, broken family environments, uh, they've been reduced, therefore, uh, crime was reduced. Uh, I, I've heard that argument I don't, before. And I don't I think know that... if I buy the data on it. I don't have a moral problem with it. Again, because my position is I don't highly think it's... correlational and that's it, but not, not highly correlational in the fact that it's a high correlation. It's just that that's all we've got is the pattern, right. I think. Right. I, I don't know. And I again, I think is. you I think you go back to that. I mean, I, I it may be the case that that's true, but that doesn't I don't think that that obviates a. Uh, the. I don't think it makes uh, makes it the case that you can once again sort of play God with with where everybody's going to go mm-hmm. and whether or not they're going to end up living a life of crime, whether or not they're going to end up you know dying in the poverty they were born in, all of those things. To me, to me, it just even if that's the case, I mean, you could by that logic, we should go in and nuke giant portions of Africa because people are going to be born into and probably die in poverty. Well, I, I think that's one know. thing we can all agree push on. Push back so, a little yeah. bit on that. Is that <laughs> I, I think real quick to clarify this. No, I, I understand yeah. it's not a direct. Uh, yeah, yeah. But no, but but like like again, for, from my perspective, I don't think there's anything immoral about having an abortion in the first trimester. Right, but you do agree that 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 fetuses, whether they are human right now or not, they will be human, right? If if left to to gestate, yes, they will become yes. human. There is there are okay. potentiality right. that, that will yes. eventually become a human. I think. One thing, because I like that that uh, alleviate that we say it to ourselves on the left to alleviate the cognitive dissonance on that point. And what I said to myself, and what my you know people said to me at that time as I was making this decision is that uh, 
uh, it goes back to drawing the line somewhere later and the clump of cells language that Heaton is using. And I realize it may be arbitrary and that science may eventually determine that it's it's from the moment of conception. But to me, it's like, well, maybe I'm slippery sloping. It's like, well, isn't just the egg or just this the sperm potentially life too? Like, yes, it has to come together, but that's pretty random. And why does it matter so much that they've fused in that way? And so because, what because I told if they my, don't yeah. fuse, because if they don't fuse, then they just die. Yeah. And so I mean, I, I, I hear you, but I, yeah. I refuse to give up my right to masturbate. OK, that's what yeah. it really. Is. <laughs> well, then this conversation has been pointless. So uh, I'll, I'll I have say been masturbating this, this whole time. Oh, my God. Yeah. Bring, brings me back. I think to the yeah, me too. Uh, yeah. This brings me back to uh, the, the 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 point of I think what's the weakest position on on my side. As I said, the thing that makes me very uncomfortable is I do think at some point it's murder. I don't think it's murder at the beginning. I don't know where the bright line is. So that that makes me inherently uncomfortable. I don't think I'm ever going to be like a full throated like I feel 100 percent good about this either way. The the thing that I think like me using viability just seems like the most uh, the, mm. the most easy to target bright line at this time. Where, where I think you could poke holes in my argument that would make me very uncomfortable and make me rethink my argument is if you come in and you go, okay, um, the, the uh, fetus can't survive from 13 weeks, but it can definitely feel pain and has thoughts about that. Then I'm like, oh shit. Well, that sounds like a, like a, a non-viable person to me as opposed to a potentiality. And I don't know where that is. And that is kind of a gray zone that makes me uncomfortable. Uh, and I, I suspect that they're there, there are different. I, I suspect that there's lots of different things happening at different speeds of heartbeat, brain, all that kind of stuff. And well, and, and I, you and you mentioned the quickening earlier, and mm -hmm. you you re, we realize here in the 21st century how ridiculous that was, but that was the measure that they had at the time. Who in the future is going to right. to look back at us and go, well, that was the measure they had at the time. They didn't know any better. Right, and I think. I don't know. You know, to quote uh, the great uh, game theorist Thomas Schelling, whose arguments about focal points basically explain most, you know, trench warfare and a bunch of other stuff, is basically, uh, I, I find it hard to disagree with you, Jennings, that the moment of conception is a pretty obvious focal point for when we go from like got some sperm floating around to like the potential for something else. And I think right. that's actually, if I separate myself from it, a stronger biological argument than like, whatever the quickening was, or at some point when you have like, you can feel pain or, or whatever, until we have that, I'm very sympathetic to that view. I will say, well, I'll and just I, say yeah. you, uh, if you, if you change your mind and decide to become <laughs> pro-life, the, the, the right, they love people who are left, but agree with them on one thing. Okay. They love it. That's the ideal information agent that we've talked about, Heaton. That's, <laughs> yeah. the, that's the one thing. But the one other thing I'll say to show you how far I am from joining you on that side, and this is maybe the least flattering thing I can say about myself, is I want to be very, go back on something I said, where I said I got the abortion and I cried for a few days, and now I feel surprisingly fine. I still feel surprisingly fine, but I cried for a few days, not because I thought what I did, not because of the abortion, but because when I did it, I, I don't know why I feel like this. I need to say this confessional, but this is truly what happened. I got the, the therapeutic thing made me think of it. I got the like uh, gas or whatever to make you not feel the pain. I was conscious for the whole thing, but like you, you get sort of like the not laughing gas, but something funny, uh, not funny. Uh, and I felt pretty good. And right. afterward, I remember it happening, but I was like sort of feeling okay. And we kind of a little bit high. And, and it was the, the following few days. I was like, I just did something horrible to somebody else, this clump of cells to somebody else. And I couldn't even be a conscious, fully conscious for it. And I was really mad at myself for not at least having the decency of enduring the actual pain of it. And instead gave myself sort of like a fuzzy, warm blanket pass. So I got really hung up on that piece. Not that I thought the decision was wrong, but that I thought that at minimum, and your your constant, your talk about the afterlife made me think of it too. I was like, I, I have to admit that I felt some glimmer of this was a viable something that I felt guilty that I didn't at least have the decency to experience the pain of removing it. And because you wouldn't I, have felt that guilt had you had like your gallbladder removed. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So I think I think you win. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. Finally. That's a cognitive dissonance that I think I just have to live with. And and yeah. but I want it to be clear that like even my own sadness was a very selfish version of it. Uh, and I, I, and you, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think you, I, I think it's still a very, I mean, I, 
I assume that's a, a completely normal response. I've heard that many times. Mm. Like, pe- yeah, uh, people who get abortions very frequently have difficult times immediately after we're dealing with it. I mean, I don't, I don't, I, I don't think that it sounds particularly selfish. I think it sounds like, I mean, I think it sounds like there's a part of you that that sees it from my point of view. Totally. And and by the way, totally vice versa. There's a part of me that sees this from your point of view too. And there's um, a reason we're not having an argument about Roe v. Wade, the gallbladder edition, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's yes. what's coming next. Yes. That's what I hear. Yes. Yeah. You're going to come uh, for no, our gallbladders. <laughs> I, it is my fervent hope and incredible doubt that <laughs> conversations about abortion will go this swimmingly in the rest of the country. I think we're yeah. going to see a lot of them come up in the near future. Uh, and um, they are going to be real heated. I uh, I, I hope that they're as enlightening as what we just had. I thought this was a very good conversation. And Agreed. uh um yeah, appreciate you both. Uh, uh a- Andrea, thank you for kicking this off and, sure. and loop- looping me yes, in. Yes, thank you. Thank you for joining us. And thank you both for your willingness to do it and for being so so thoughtful throughout. Yeah, and, and uh for everybody listening, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed yeah. this too. Uh, I know I have a very nice audience, so it's very unlikely any of you would would go on the attack anyway. But given that this is a heated topic, I, I do want to reiterate that you would be very Im- improper and and I would delete it if you were to say anything that was a character attack of either of these people that were very, very kind to come on and really bear their souls. And, and, and so if you want to engage in a good faith argument, totally legitimate, that's what we've been doing for the last hour, but, but be sure to confine that. I don't think I have to tell anybody that right. just in case I want to throw that out there. I don't want to see anything that is mean to these two friends of mine. I'm uh, ready to step outside and have someone throw buckets of red paint on me. Is that how this works? Or is that a, that's right. Animal if, if you have thing? a problem with Andrea, go to New York and throw right. buckets of red paint on her like right. a sane adult. It's right. not also, paint. We put a we put a red dress and a bonnet on you. That's right, a, right, right. That's, I also want to be the first to say that I'm sitting here being like it's a clump of cells. Who cares? And I'm the vegan of the group. And I'm like, but but you know, fish <laughs> life is pre- precious. So we'll leave that hypocrisy for another day. Like, how dare you milk a cow? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, all right. I'll thanks, everyone. Yeah. All that Thank note. you, guys. That's all. And that's our show. Thank you so much for listening to Majoring in Everything. I'm your host, Andrea Jones Roy. And Majoring in Everything is a proud member of the World's Smartest Podcast Network. Be sure to check out worldsmartestpodcastnetwork.com and our partner shows. We are edited by Eric P. Stipe, who says that I need an outro, so I'm making one. Eric, does this count? Are you happy? I hope so. Thanks again for listening. Keep majoring in everything. Bye. <laughs>